right, I think we should be live on Facebook right now. Thank you to everyone who's come through. I'm going to give over the hosting abilities to our anchor for the day, Brother Nolobe, right there, taking us through. And then also, welcome everyone. I'm going to make you the host right now, and I'm going to um, quickly mute myself. May God bless you as we start off our lesson. Amen. Thank you so much, my king. Greetings, one. And greetings, all. I'd like to believe that we are live. So I am quickly going to share the screen and then dive straight into the announcements, if you'll allow me. Uh, oops, sorry about that. All right, I'm going to share the announcements quickly, quick, quick in the heart. But before we do that, I hope you can hear me. Let's just ask for grace. Let's just ask for guidance and ask for blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are once again to glorify you in every way possible. We are asking that you build the speaker as you touch it to prepare for the time that has been passed for this very moment. Uh, may you please minister to someone's life today in light of the topic of the day, and please help us to also engage with each other to edify, and to uh, encourage, and to learn from each other. This, therefore, is our prayer. And uh, we are asking also that you may bless this platform to do more and to soar even higher and higher. Bless the people who are behind its organization and those who are funding it, we are asking you that you may please share your blessings on it. This is our prayer, therefore, in the mighty heaven, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Welcome to 2.30 Conversations. I'll try not to be loud because the echo keeps on bumping back. And uh, Welcome to 2.30 Conversations where we converse, we facilitate, we think, we talk about what we're thinking, we share ideas, respectfully so. And as you would know, um, the momentum of the fire or the flame of 2.30 conversations is growing. So with that being said, we would like to encourage you to please um, invite people to like the page so that it can explode more than it already has. And we also have a 2.30 conversations YouTube channel, as I'd like to believe, and it's growing. And any video that you can think of is uploaded right there. All right, we've got a mother who's been holding us before we started to you know, stop crawling and to start walking. Uh, SDA advertise, Gulit Lapo, everything that you may want to know within the Adventist circles in the Southern African space with SDA movement is something that you'll find on the SDA advertise. Please do encourage other people, share it, like, you know, the things, do the things that needs to be done. And then it also has a um, Facebook page as well. I would like to encourage once again to get people to like, get people to like, because this is us doing what uh, we know best, which is to share what we have. But uh, on the part of sharing the word, it's, it's on the part, it's on your end to do that. We had a lesson earlier this morning. Uh, we were blessed to learn about what it means to be sick outside and inside than we're moving. So today we've been blessed with the presence of Mom Nosipiwa Baloi, who's going to teach us or to speak to us as she has, God has inspired her to prepare about childhood wounds. You know, when we're saying you are messed up, we're going to touch on that pretty. What does it mean to be, you know, um, looking at the repercussions of the way you grow up? And all of us have got a portion of that. How are we saved a week later, Dr. Admiral Nube? How are we saved? The week after that, our brother Ukuku, we all know him, we men and women, manhood from a biblical lens, all right? And the week after that, finally, we managed to lock him down, the essence of giving. Om Fundisi, for Pastor Kaya Mieza, he'll be blessing us about what it means to give. All right, maybe give without complaining, God knows. Touchy, controversial talk, topic, and my brother Arthur Sibande will be walking us through that towards the end of the month next month. God bless him as he prepares. And then if failure was a person, if failure was a person from Kubegan Ashton Rubanda, He'll also be uh, engaging us on this dynamic topic. Now, next week, Umta will be walking us through the rhythms of rest. Lesson study, 9.30, which is the baby of 2.30 conversations. Please do share and join in so we can engage. And when you've joined in, uh, let's have a nice time in the Lord and share our thoughts and engage. We're working on merchandise. Uh, we'll be putting it out there eventually. It's just that... Um, Right now, um, we are in the process of consolidating the idea so that it can work and fly when the time comes. We'd like to thank Ustasa 
uh, Stasa Northern Conference for sponsoring. They've been our supporter from the word go. And we'd like to thank God for them. We'd like to thank them for also holding us by the hand up to this point in time. All right, at this point, I'm going to stop the share. All right. And I'm going to hand over to Mam Nosipiwo. And Mam Nosipiwo, I would like to believe you had gotten the brief, perhaps. Um, we are hoping, Wuti, for the next uh, 30, 35 to 45 minutes, you'll be blessing us. We'll have a mini or rather a conversation shortly after that. And then I would like to believe there's somewhere else we need to be, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So at this point, I'm going to just, okay. Um, skip the blue. All right. So, yes, ma'am. Let me quickly pin you. I've pinned you. And then I would like to believe you can, can you please, are you able to unmute yourself, ma'am? I've asked to unmute you. Okay. Yes, there we it go. looks like I can. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. There we go. And then now, do I let me see? Have, have I done everything that I need to do? You can are you the, the host. You, I can see can the presentation. See? Yes, okay, I can see so the presentation. So it means um, then the host, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead, man. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all um, for, for coming. Unfortunately, we had some technical issues, and I apologize um, that we had to start late because of that. Um, I guess that's what comes with technology. But I'm grateful that we are all here. And um, as as a brother had said, that Nobi has said, Ngolobe has said that um, oh, the way, oh, yeah, <laughs> the way the program is uh, is structured. Is, is, in, is in a way where I share and then we, you can ask questions at the end and then you can share. But I'll just like to change it a little bit. It's not really going to change the format that has been uh, put together by 2.30 conversations, but rather what I would like to do is, I because I want to get this as engaging as possible, I will then during the presentation, ask you some questions and I will appreciate it if you were to participate and answer those questions and um, so that it can be as engaging as possible. Um, then at the end, you can ask the questions and also share, right? Um, but I would really like to keep the engagement from the beginning because I think this is a topic that really requires that. It's a very complex one because it's not something that you teach, right? It's something that one goes through. And, and so, and, and it, it, it really requires a more intimate, safe environment to, to, to go through it um, than a platform, than, than to actually make it a podcast or on Zoom or Facebook uh, live thing, right? So it would have been really ideal for us to be together in a, in a room and then we go through this process. But we are here now and we thank God that we can touch on it. All right. Um, so as we start, um, okay, let me see why I can't move to the next slide. Okay, cool. Um, so like we said, um, the topic is quite, it's huge, right? It, it's complex. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to deal with. But I just want us to look at just a pie of it, just a piece of the pie, you know, um, and look at the how our, you know, childhood wounds and beliefs and what's the link between that and how can this help us to actually heal from this, right? Um, so that's just what we're going to cover today, right? And maybe other days we will look into the other parts of it. So that's all that we'll be looking at um, today. So we, as we started, then we want to understand as to what definition are we going to move with when we're saying childhood wounds, others call it inner child trauma, right? And it's not as if you've got another person that's living in you, but it is, um, sorry, I just wanna change the way I'm viewing this. Okay, so it is um, referring to when a child witnesses uh, or experiences an overwhelming emotionally 
painful experience in their childhood. So it's either they have seen something that has, you know, um, traumatized them, or they've experienced it themselves. So when we're talking about this, that's what we are referring to, right? So people will say it refers to a part of you that is stuck or a part of you that is not healed. So when we're talking about childhood wounds, we're talking about that. It's something that has happened to you or you've witnessed when you were a child, which bring which has brought about like overwhelming emotional um, pain, you know. Um, so that's what we are we are referring to. So I want to see how do how do these childhood wounds fall, right? So we're going to look at that. How how does that happen? So we come into the world um, as children not knowing anything. Okay, we don't know if people are going to hurt us or if people are going to be kind to us. We don't know that. We don't know if life is going to be easy or life is going to be hard. So we come in into the world really not knowing, innocent, if we were to use that kind of a term. And then an event happens, right, that we were talking about. Um, this will be like the painful event, something painful happens to us, right, or we witness it. And once this happens, we then give meaning to that event. Uh, and the meaning is what you know for sure, is what you think you know for sure um, about that event, okay? It's what you, you think you know for sure. Basically, it's your interpretation of that event. Uh, you say, it's what you think you know for sure about that particular event. It's, the meaning is not an event. I want us to just find each other there. It's not the event, but it's how you have seen the event, okay? And, 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 then, base, and then this meaning then gives birth to a belief, okay? It gives birth to a belief and, and you form, you form a belief, and this belief is informed basically by, by the meaning you have given to the event, right? And, 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 and if we were to define a belief as well, we'll say a belief is a statement you make about, um, about reality. And it's something that you believe to be true, okay? It's a statement you make about reality and, and, and it's a, you believe this to be true, okay? And it's informed by the meaning you have given to this event. And, and, and this comes with a lot of emotions, right? So the reason you, you are in this, you're giving meaning to this thing because there's emotions that are sitting with you. And, and, and these could be fear, loneliness, um, you know, feeling not loved, not seen, not important. There, there's something that's sitting here. So, and, and so you see, and then you make these conclusions that, oh, okay, maybe this is then, therefore this is what it means because you're believing that, what you're coming up with is true, right? And because of this, and because you, you don't want to feel like this, you feel unsafe, you feel uncomfortable with these emotions, um, you then come up with a coping mechanism, right? You come up with a coping mechanism a, or a survival strategy to say, okay, how do I then get myself not to feel like this? How do I get myself not to, to, to be here in this space that's uncomfortable for me? And then you come up with a coping mechanism to cope in order for you to cope with this particular thing that you're going through. It's a survival strategy, right? And then now we go about life using this coping mechanism. Okay, um, because you're trying to protect yourself from A, from B, from C. So you put on this protective layer of coping. This is what I'm going to do in order to shield or to protect myself. Okay, um, and then this is what we become. This is what we become, all right? And, um, and this, I want to say something here, and, and that is, the beliefs that we formed 
right? These beliefs that we form during this journey, in this process, the beliefs that we form, right, determine the meaning we give to events today. The beliefs that we formed then in our childhood determine the meaning we give to events today. And this is how um, we say our child wounds are still affecting us even though we are adults because those beliefs are still informing you know, the meaning we give um, to the events that are happening to us now that we are adults. So, so because we, we, we go through so many things as well, even when we are children and as we are growing, okay, um, we, we keep putting on layers, okay? We put on this layer, oh, when this happens, okay, this is what I, this is how I cope. So you put on this layer and you, you create another belief, you form another belief because of something else that happens, you form another belief. So now there are all these layers, it's like an onion, right? We've got all these layers that we have formed in order to protect ourselves for obvious reasons, because the pain we experienced was just too much, it was overwhelming, right? And so we don't want to go through it again. So we found, find ways to cope, we find ways to survive, right? So we create this, this, these layers. And, and, and they actually say that children between the ages of four to 10, they, they, whilst they are cognitive, um, um, mind is developing, they are, they are very sensitive, okay? They're very, very sensitive. So everything to them, they, they feel it, you know? So they feel more than they can reason. So, and because of this, therefore, that's why it, everything to them is like, oh, oh, and they always try, always trying to shield and to protect um, themselves against the world. Okay? And like we said, these beliefs then, that we formed determine the meaning we give to events today. So we grow up with this. We grow up with these, okay. So we've, we've laid a bit of a foundation, but now let's see it. Let, let's see, let's apply this and, and let's see it and apply it to the stories that we're gonna say. So we're gonna use some examples, right? These are real stories. All of them are real stories. And um, so we're gonna try and, and, and apply this to the stories and see what we mean, because I guess stories help to make sense of what we just looked at. And the first story is mine, okay? So I'll start with my story. Um, when I was a child, right? Um, I, I, I'll just lay the foundation because obviously I have to give more context for you to understand what I'm saying. So when I was a, a child, when I was like a year old, uh, my dad left, left, left my mom, left us. And um, at this time, my mother was 31 years old um, and she had five kids with me being the last one, all right? And, um, and my mom and my dad had developed quite a lot together. So they started businesses together and they both worked in those businesses. So when my dad left, he took everything with him, right? He took everything, the businesses, the cars, whatever. He took everything, like the only thing left was the house. Um, that's where we, we stayed, right? Um, and then he went and started a, a new life with a new lady. Um, and, and my mother really, for, for a while, you know, struggled to, to find, a job that could help her to look after all of us, to meet all the financial needs for these five kids at 31 years old, you know? And um, so what happened then therefore is that we needed, we still needed to, to get, to have my dad support us financially because he's the one who had the money to do so, right? And so my dad, right, what he would do is, and because he would pay for our fees, our school fees, and also he would uh, buy food for us. 
but what he would do is to the grocery that he will bring for us for to last us for the month will come in a small box you know it will come in a small box um, and this small box had small things in it uh, you know a sugar maize meal and but the food that he was bringing for the month for his five kids needed to fit basically in this small box um so that's what he would do you know at the beginning of the month bring bring the small box and leave it by the entrance to my house and you will hoot so you will leave it by the stoop at the entrance of my house hoot and drive off and then we will have to go and get that and and that will be our food for for the month and obviously, right? Um, it, it was it was really not enough, and it will run out, or at, at, at the beginning of the month, or and we will try and stretch it, but it doesn't. So there will be nights where one will sleep with pup and water with a little bit of sugar, right? Um, and because that's all that we had, because that's all that we had, and he will also come some days, switch off the electricity. And you'll say, you guys are wasting money, you're wasting, you're wasting electricity, and you will sit and you will have to sit in the dark. Um, you'll be standing in the dark or eating in the dark because you know you're scared of this man who comes and scares us off and switches off everything, right? And we had that thing that you depend on him, so you can't get him angry, you know. Um, so that's what he will do. And uh, and, and and so to me, these are the feelings that I had. It's like, then this means that I'm not loved, he doesn't love me, not important, I don't matter, not seen, you know, so, so it's the feelings that one would have um, around this thing. I couldn't understand how can this person be my father and still treat us you know, like this, it didn't make sense to me, right? And, and it was, so it created a very uncomfortable space. I don't know. So my sisters had their own experience, right, of it, but this is my one. And um, so at school, though, um, what would happen is, um, so this one time, I'm going to share with you my coping mechanism. At school, then I used to love school, right, and do well at school. What I picked up then as a child is, when obviously when we write exams and then we get our reports, we we'll have to take those to my dad. So I took mine to very early in life. I picked it up. I took mine to my father, and he opened it. When he opened it, Good people, um, good afternoon. We are now indeed faced with a proper, proper problem because um, is she back? Can I just double check that she's back? Oh, yes, she is. All right. I'm going to ask her to unmute herself. Because I um, thought she was. Like okay. Yes, I'm back. Thanks. Thank you. Please go ahead. Um, Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah, it looks like my, net my network is really not kind um, today. But let, let, let's let's continue. Um, let me try and share again. Can you see my screen? Yes, we, we okay, can see. Great. Okay, cool. So I think I left it off where I said then. Okay, then my dad will celebrate um, the fact that I I I, I came. The fact that I came first, and um, you know, and he would, he, you know, he would brag about it. Oh, my child is smart. Oh, my child came first, and 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 to me, this it felt good, right? Oh, he can see me. Oh, he's celebrating me. 
oh, he gives me hugs, he's giving me hugs, he's giving me kisses, and that affection, you know, the attention, because that's what children want when they're young, attention, affection, and, and, and acknowledgement, right? So then he was given, because that's how they, th they think that's love. Okay, children believe that's love. Love must be packaged like that. So I would believe that, oh, he loves me, you know? Oh, I saw that, oh, my dad loves me. Um, and then, um, so you, and, and at this time, what my dad will also do is to buy meat and then give it to me and say, go and celebrate with your sisters. I'm like, oh, we're going to have meat, you know? Um, because of this, then, this then is what then came to me. That, oh, the belief that I then created is, okay, for me to be seen, for me to feel like I matter, for me to feel like I'm loved, I need to achieve, okay? Because when, if we go through the cycle again, the event, right? We've described the event and the meaning that I gave to that event is that I don't matter, right? And the, the, and the belief that I put to it is that, I don't matter, I'm not seen, okay? I'm not seen and I don't matter. That's, that's what I, I gave that particular, the belief I had about that particular, what, what it informed, what it gave birth to, right? And then now, okay, when I pass, I get a different reaction like, oh, if ever I want to see this author, if ever, uh, then it means I need to achieve. So passing to me, became very personal, right? It became a very personal thing to the point that um, when I didn't come first, I came second or third or whatever, I would cry like someone died because, and my mother was, would be like, but you passed and you passed very well, what's the problem? But what was the problem? The issue is that it's what it meant to me, right? Because then I thought like, oh, then I'm going to go back to that which I don't want to feel. Right, so 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 that 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 so I needed to always work hard and 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 so that I can be seen, so that I can be seen, so that I can feel like I matter. Now, we said that these child wounds have a way of of informing <laughs> even our adult stage, our adulthood, right? Because those beliefs bring meaning even to the events that happen to us as adults. So, so I grew up therefore with this thing of having to always perform, achieve, do well, perfection, you know, it must be perfect in everything that you're doing. Um, so even when I was working, we'd be like, I have to do this project perfectly. Right? And when you're providing a service to a client, it must be perfect, you must deliver because you can't afford not to, right? Um, and, uh, and, and even as a Christian, you. I was even striving to be a perfect Christian because I thought for me to be accepted by God, for God to see me as the beloved child in whom is well pleased, then I need to do well. So even I brought that even in my relationship with God, right? And, and, and that's how these things, they affect not only how we relate with each other, but they also affect how we relate to God because then I made God my dad. But I, I thought I need to treat him the same way, right? That I need to perform even for the Lord so that I can be accepted. Um, so, so, so this is how uh, these, the child wounds then even affect us, right? When you're adults. Let me give another example. I'll, I'll tell it, um, I won't drag it as much as I drag mine. So this man was sharing, right? Um, he was sharing his own experience, and his experience is that when um, he was young, when he was young, his mom and dad divorced. And when his mom and dad divorced, the mother married another man, and they stayed with the stepfather, right? And the stepfather was a guy who was just always angry, you know, he was an angry guy. He was also a neat freak. He wanted things to be perfect. Um, and he was, you know, a masculine guy, so he was quite big. And he was, he was scared of him because he was just always angry at the, at, in the house. So this one time, 
the mother asked him to go and 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 flush um a soup that was left over right that they had kept in the fridge and she said just take and flush this thing out in the toilet and so he took he did that he went to the toilet flushed the soup and as he was walking out then he bumps into the, the stepfather and the stepfather asked him boy did you wash your hands you know and and he said and then his response to him was no, I didn't. I, I didn't have to, you know. Um, I, I didn't use the toilets, so I didn't do it. And the father, the stepfather got so angry at him and he pulled him up and, and he pushed him against the wall, right? And then he hit him, you know, and said, you know, you're supposed to wash your hands after using the toilet, right? Um, so he was like, so angry um, at him. And the boy ran and and, and, and ran to hide, right, uh, after this event. And it made him feel so scared, so scared and so alone. Um, and, and in his head, he's saying, I, I should not have said that, you know. I should have said that I washed my hands. Then, then maybe it was not going to hurt me, right? Um, telling the truth, because it looks like telling the truth gets one into trouble. Telling the truth gets one hurt. Okay, and, and, and the belief then that he formed was that um, it is not safe to tell the truth. Okay, not safe to tell the truth. So then he created a coping mechanism for, for himself says, you know what, if ever I'm going to be okay in the world, I have to lie so that I do not get in, into trouble so that I don't get hurt. Okay, and, and, and so that's what he told himself. And, and, and that's how he was, you know, in his life as well, right? He, 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 that belief continued to inform, um, it, it, became, it continued to inform the events in his life. It, it gave meaning to events in his life to the point that he felt a need to just lie about everything, he says. He says, I lie even about the smallest of things because that's how I am now, I just lie. And so he would lie about what he did, why he did something. Uh, he would lie about why he did not do it. He would lie about why he doesn't want this. He lie literally about almost everything because he thinks if he tells the truth, then he's going to get hurt. Subconsciously, that belief is still sitting there, even though with him, when you're an adult, you don't have that thing that, oh, I'm doing this so that I don't get hurt. That's sitting with you, right? And you continue, <laughs> you continue to practice it because that has always been how you continue to live life, right? And, and for us as adults, we need to go deep in order to find the core, but we, we live our lives informed by those things because you then see yourself lying <laughs> all the time, but you know, but, but it's informed by something, okay? So that's how then his coping mechanism and it has how it's affected his life. And another story, the last story is the, this one, I was watching a documentary around this particular one, right? Um, this guy is in prison and he's sharing his story. And um, he says that he has been seeing a therapist going through what um, what has happened, you know, to him, and how he has treated people, and and how it has helped him to see, you know, and discover things that he he didn't really know, you know, about himself and how they his 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 childhood was affected, okay. And so, the beginning was about apologizing to the people he has hurt. He has raped women. He says, "Mom, I'm here because I've raped quite a number of women." Um, and, and, and he says, you know what, I was just me when I was out there. I was that guy that people wanted to avoid because I, I didn't mind getting into fights. And I, I was a rapist, you know, I was, I was just, you know, my life was just problematic. And he says, during these um, sessions, what I discovered then is when he was young, um, now the root, when he was young, he says he was raped. Um, he was raped by his uncle and um, he tried, he says, I remember trying 
to fight him. But, and I could not fight him, you know, he was too strong, he was strong, and he overpowered me. And he says, after that rape, I was also raped by a teacher, you know, and, 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 and even with him, he could not, you're right, he could not overpower the guy, the, 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 the teacher as well. And they always told him to keep quiet you know, uh, about it. But, but what sat with him where, where emotions, where you, you felt like you felt weak, you felt worthless. You know? It says he felt worthless and he was alone because he was scared to tell people about it. Um, scared what they're going to think. They're going to think he's weak as well. So it became his secret, his thing that he grew up with. He stored it um, within. And, um, and so he felt weak. He felt like he's not a man. He's not a man. Um, and, and, and because of this, then he thought, okay, his belief, right? The meaning and the belief that he put to it was that for me to be safe, right? You must, be, you must not be weak, you know? For you not to be safe, you must not be weak because weakness is bad. Weakness is bad. So, so, so for me to survive here, for me to cope in this life, Therefore, I have to act strong. I have to prove that I'm a man, okay? I have to prove that I'm a man. And his proving was um, then I'm gonna beat people up, you know? Um, and, 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 and he was raped women because it made him feel strong that he has overpowered someone. You know, he hits someone and he, he wins a fight. It makes him feel like, oh, I'm not weak because he's running away from those feelings, right? I'm not weak, I'm a man. I, I, I was strong, you know, I overcame, I was able to do this. But, but, be, but because you see the problem is um, these beliefs, right? These coping mechanisms don't last as long, right? It's, it's like a, um, a beach ball, right? If you, when you, you, when you do, when you do your, when you act towards your the coping mechanism, when you apply your strategy, your, your survival strategy, it's like you're pushing the, the beach ball underwater. Um, but you can't keep it there for too long. And when you leave, you, when, you, when your hand is off, it comes up again, right? So you always see the need to always, you know, push it down, push it down. And, and it happens all the time. You always see a need, always work hard, always see the need to fight, and always see the need to fight, to rape, to, and, 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 and some of these things are quite hectic, you know, they're quite hectic. Why? Because, it's unfortunate that this, the, the, the author here is, is really unknown. The person who wrote this quotation says, if you do not heal what, what hurt you, then you will bleed on people who did not cut you. And that's what we, and that's what happens, right? The people who suffer for the hurt are actually the people who did not even cause it because for you, it's like the world is against you. Even though you're not consciously conscious of it, but but that's how we are, and that's how we operate, that's how we cope, that's how we live our lives, um, because we're trying to shield and protect ourselves, you know, uh, against the world. And another quote very famous, it says, hurt people, hurt people, right? It's hurt people who go around hurting other people until that we heal that which has hurt us. You know, and, and therefore that's why it's important for us to, to, to heal, all right? Okay, I think I've, I've been speaking alone um, for a while now, so I want us to do an exercise together, all right? Because I did say I want this to, to be engaging as well, okay? So before we start this exercise, um, please, I'm going to request that you, you become open to it, okay? Be open. Um, don't block the feelings that are going to come, okay? Don't block them. And please don't judge them too, okay? So be open to it. Don't, don't block any feelings and don't judge any feelings as well, all right? Okay, cool. Um, so um, are we ready? I want to see well, the comments then I can know that I'm talking to you guys. Okay, so I want you to, okay, now, are you ready? Just say ready. 
Ah, perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to please um, close your eyes. Close your eyes. If you're typing, it means your eyes are not closed, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so please, let's close our eyes and take a deep breath in and take it out. Okay. Now, say out loud, okay? Say it out loud. I am not good enough. I am not good enough. Now pay attention, right? To the, to your body, you know? Are you feeling any tension? Um, is there anything, any feelings that are coming up for you? Just, just pay attention, right? Don't judge anything. Are, are you feeling anything? Or is your body tensing up? Um, is your heart racing? Okay. Because what we know is that the body does not lie. You know, it keeps the score. There's a book that says that it says the body keeps the score. Um, so it doesn't lie to always give us the clues. Okay. So now, if you felt anything, right, or there's an emotion that came with that, um, it, 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 it then means that you, that you might be believing this thing. You believe this thing that you are not good enough. Okay, so it means that you, you believe, it's a belief that you may need to work on. Okay, all right, but keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Again, let's take a deep breath in and out. And now say out loud again, I do not matter. I do not matter. Are you feeling anything in your body? Um, is there any, a, is the heart racing or there's some tension in the body? Is there a feeling that is coming up? Okay. Because that might also mean that that's a belief that you need to work on, right? And again, let's take a deep breath in and out. And say out loud, I am not worth loving. I am not worth loving. What comes up for you? Is there any tension in the body? Is the heart racing? Is there any feeling there? Okay. Now breathe in and out and open your eyes, okay? Open your eyes. All right. You see, there are some people, okay, who will not feel anything, you, you know, about these things that we just said now. And the reason why they would not, it's either it's, it's not a belief that they are struggling with or they're blocking it, right? But, um, if you felt something, it means it's something that's in you, right? It's a belief that you possibly have and that you need to heal, a belief that you need to work on, right? A belief that you need to heal, okay? Um, so if you did feel anything, if you did feel anything or there was something that happened to your body, I'm going to ask that you, you raise your hand and, and share with us, all right? Share with us what you felt, right? 
Um, but if you're not comfortable doing that, that's perfectly okay. I understand, right? Um, we don't have to feel comfortable to do this thing, right? And anyway, as I said, ideally would like to do this in a more safe environment, intimate. But if you're feeling like you're okay sharing, um, please do um, raise your hand and share with us. You know, maybe just one or two people can share as to what, what, what came up for them, all right? So I'm just going to open up to that, to those who felt something. Um, let me see if I can be able to see the hands. I don't think I can. So is there anyone who would like to share with us? One person or two, if you are comfortable to do so. Can you share with us what, what came up for you? Um, is there a hand or not? Um, all right, sorry about that. We were just, you know, struggling with the hosting abilities. They keep moving around, but then I'm host now. All right, we've got U, we've got the following people. We've got Uza Zahate, who would like to touch on something. Ulinda Mkwanazi as well as Utande. Let me quickly switch on my video. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right, so all right. first no, and foremost, fine. yeah, before, first and foremost, me now, I was, res my mind was resisting. I was like, no ways, that can't be true. Yeah. So there was, a, yeah, there yeah. Was, it was saying no ways. It's like I was just refusing with uh, Under normal circumstances, when we're having an ordinary conversation, we'll be like, you're talking nonsense, something like that. Yeah. So let yeah. me give Zaza. Zaza, would you like to go first? Okay. Zaza, thank you. I've asked you to unmute you before I hit, ma'am. Okay, hi guys. Yes, hi Zaza. Yes, hi, Zaza. Uh, uh, hi guys. I, I, I know I battle with a few of the things that were mentioned, and I felt defeated. I felt defeated. Mm -hmm. I felt weak, um, and I had to stop because mm -hmm. I know it would have triggered a lot of things that I don't want them to be triggered. But I know I, I felt something, I felt weak and I hate feeling weak. So I always try to fight the weakness off. Mm -hmm. So I, after the exercise, mm -hmm. actually a few seconds, a few minutes after on the, doing the exercise, I had to stop and mm -hmm. try to recollect myself and not feel vulnerable, basically. Try to mm -hmm. fight it off. Yeah, but I did, mm -hmm. I did feel something. I tried to block it, but it made me very weak, emotionally and physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing, Zagra. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing. We've got two other people, Mama, but before I continue to hand on to Ulinda, uh, do you charge for this? <laughs> are, you th are you saying now? <laughs> I'm uh, not going I'm to asking. charge. I'm asking, no. under normal circumstances, do you charge people for this? No, no. Okay. All right. Hey. Yeah, no, it's a skill. It's a skill and a half. Linda, I've asked to unmute you. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Hi, Linda. Yeah. In fact, um, this is crazy because I a few minutes before I just sent Zanina a message and I was like, I'm so triggered. I don't know if I should mm. still continue being on this Zoom meeting or not. Mm. Um, yeah, um, um, I just got cold. Literally, I've got I've got goosebumps all over my body. I'm feeling extra cold. Uh, totally. Totally annihilated, mentally, uh, emotionally. Good morning when you're so tired, like your brain literally just does not want to process anything. You just feel like a tree. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think for me that is strange because um, these are some statements that I've repeated to myself for years. Uh, so it's just like, oh, okay. Now I'm going back to what I've normally struggled with, like, okay, mm -hmm. why, you know? And and I think the last one was was even worse. Um, yeah, because it, it, it's almost as though, like, 
you just resurrected every rejection that you've gotten ever since you were a child, all through teenagehood, all through. It's almost as though you're watching a movie of your life in fast forward. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Linda, for sharing. There's another one, Ma. Ooh, Inga Duma. Inga Duma, I've asked you on YouTube. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Inga. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, personally, this is for me a very triggering uh, topic. And I think I've personally mastered the art of... I think you mentioned something when you were starting in your story of uh, you felt like you were not loved. So you mm -hmm. had to do something in order for you to end that, which is that's literally what I've been doing like all of my life. And okay, uh, specifically to this um, exercise that you made us do, like when you, I, I, I did close my eyes, then I, I think I had the first question and I opened my eyes. I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I always try and block out those. And mm -hmm. each and every question that you post, I kept on saying, no, my love, no. <laughs> and said it the opposite way. Like, uh, it's, it's something that I actually do. Uh, like, I never always want to go through that because I know it brings up so much um, memories that I don't want to go through. And it brings so much hurt, which is like, I think, which is why when you were like, I am not loved. I kept on, mm. I kept on repeating what you were saying, but in a different way, but no, I'm loved my love. Mm. So like, I, I, there was a point where I opened my eyes and I was just like, mm -mm, no, I'm not about to participate in this because it's going to trigger a lot. And I think why I was doing that is even the lesson today triggered a lot of, mm. of pain that I, I, I think it actually in a way triggered me to actually show me that a lot of things I've been harboring them inside and it's not helping at all. It's things that you have to deal with, but it felt like more like a confrontation when um, I think it was the Wednesday part of the lesson where it was talking about uh, depression and talking about how the life uh, lifeguard will never be able to, to save someone when they are fighting. You need to mm -hmm. be able to be still so that he can be helped. Thank you so much, Inga, for sharing. Yeah, I don't know how much time you have more, but there's another hand as well. Okay, let's allow it. Um, right, Tandega. Tandega Manaching, I've asked you to unmute you. Afternoon, everyone. Um, who knows, people? I don't know why I <laughs> came into this platform. It's it's a lot. Um, I had all types of feelings when you gave us this exercise, and especially because I'm also going through a season where I'm trying to exactly find out what's really happening with me. But I realized that, as you said, we must do the exercise. I just blocked every emotion, and the emotion comes after. And as a child, my coping mechanism has been avoidance. Um, and I had to learn the hard way, you know, that when you actually resist feeling stuff that you go through, um, that inhibits you like your immune system. And beyond that, stuffing our emotions, you know, deep down can cause energy blocks that sends everything to the body and can eventually create even diseases, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll finish off everything offline. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Ma. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Tandega. Sorry, I was muted there. Um, thank you, ladies, for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's not an easy thing. And um, as we picked up, you know, it's common with us Christians, this one. We like to block the emotions, right? Because 
what we do is to judge them and say, I'm not supposed to be feeling like this, right? Um, I need to keep a positive mind. I'm not this because I'm defining myself. But even when you block them, you know they are there, right? Um, but because what we have done is that it's just we just swept these things under the carpet. We tried to bury them, but they're not dead. Um, so the blocking does not help us, right? And rather, we need something deeper, something that is going to eliminate them, right? Because the solution we have been applying to these things are, are showing that they're not so effective. But rather, how what what can unearth them? You know, what what can unroot these things? So that even when I, 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 I talk about this thing, it does not trigger me. It does not trigger me. And, and really it does put us in a position where you feel like, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here because it, it, there's an emotion after an emotion after an emotion after an emotion because there's a lens to this thing, right? Yeah. So, but thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and I truly appreciate it because it's really not, it's not easy. Okay. What, is, what I want us to note um, about this is that what we were saying were just words, right? We, we said words, but they have an effect on us, okay? And the reason why they have an effect on us is that subconsciously, this is what we believe about ourselves. We're trying to train ourselves consciously to otherwise, but subconsciously, this is what we believe about ourselves. So instead of pushing them away, we need to reach a point where we can actually pause and ask ourselves, what is the source of this, right? And where is the root of this belief? What, 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 is, what has caused me to think like this about me, okay? And I, I guess the big question then is, because obviously we don't want to stay in the state. And, and like we said, blocking is not effective. It doesn't change anything. But can we break free from this pattern? Is there a way for us to break free from it? And that's the critical question for us to answer, right? And, and, and when we say a pattern, we're saying a pattern is a, is a repeated way of acting towards a given solution, right? And like the lies we're talking about, you keep on lying, right? And, and you, you, you keep on working hard, you know, or you rape or you eat, there's an eating disorder, you know, we're not supposed to, but you eat, there's an eating disorder that you have, you, you abuse alcohol or you shut people off, you know? Um, and you know you do this, right? There's a pattern um, that is created here. And, and, and so I wanna ask then, what makes it difficult what makes it difficult for one to break free from this? Okay, what makes it difficult for, for us to, to break free from this? And this is what makes it difficult, okay? And it's because what we saw, what you experienced, right? What you saw, what you experienced has more impact that than what you intellectually know okay what 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 you saw has a more impact than what you 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 intellectually know right um like for me uh, one of the things I, I i had a challenge with the, with 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 failure as well, making mistakes. I guess it it links also to the previous that I was talking about. So every time I would make a mistake or um, or fail at something, right? I didn't get what I was hoping to get. It would affect me, even as an, I'm talking as an adult, right? Uh, it would affect me. It would affect me badly, and because I really struggled with it, I struggled with it. Um. And, 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 and the struggle was there, even though I had read 
books on failure, right? <laughs> you would know the book Failing Forward, right? Um, I've read the book Failing Forward. Um, I've read the book Why Success Starts with Failure and the book um, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Win Big. You know, you've read those books and you think, oh, that's amazing. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how can you actually even be great um, if you don't fail? And um, uh, Richard, I think it's Richard Branson who said that um, if you have not failed, then you will always achieve mediocre. You can never achieve anything great, you know? And you're like, yeah, yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. But every time though, <laughs> I would fail. I would still feel bad because the intellectual knowledge is not as impactful as the experience I've had. Uh, uh, then, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, what I saw has more, or what I've experienced has more impact than what I intellectually knew, All right? And, 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 and that's why we're trying to depict it in the scale as well, that the experience makes it difficult to even believe. There's, it doesn't matter how smart it sounds, how logical it sounds, but the experience I've had, what I've seen, will always have an impact, you know, than the, than, than, than the knowledge. And, and, and this happens even with the Bible, right? Um, this, this is true even when it comes to the scriptures. There are certain verses that we struggle to, to, to truly believe. All right, there are certain verses we struggle to truly believe. Um, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, and we know that in all things, God work, works for the good of those who love him, right? And who have been called according to his purpose, right? And you're just thinking all things work together for good. Um, and and, 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 and when, when, when you're looking at it from yourself, you know, for some people, and you'd be like, no, 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 I don't believe, I can't see how um, this experience that I've had, you know, this painful experience can ever, ever give birth to anything good. How can it ever result in anything good? How can this that I'm experiencing, how can that um, ever, ever work out for good? And, and we struggle, you know, it's not just this verse, right? There's different verses in the scriptures that we struggle with it, but because we're Christians, what we do, we force ourselves to believe it. So like, no, you have to believe it, okay? You have, and what you do, we block whatever else that brings doubt because it makes us feel guilty that I'm not Christian enough or um, um, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being right. <laughs> so we try to block everything else in order for us to embrace this. And you, so you say, yeah, this is it, I believe it. And, 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 and you are bleeding still on the other side. But instead of us maybe taking a different approach that says, this is what God says, but this is where I am. I truly, um, can't, I'm struggling, completely struggling to understand how this experience can ever, can, how, how anything good can ever come out of this experience. I'm struggling, Lord. And, and we come to God like that, honest with him and say, I'm struggling with that. And, and, and so I am not where you want me to be, okay? So because of that, I'm surrendering this area of my life to you to, to, to heal it, to work on it so that I can then be where you want me to be honestly, authentically, without feeling like I'm, I'm working for it, I'm forcing myself to be in it, but, but really experience it, you know, and be in it. And, and, and that's why I'm saying that because, and, and what's making it for us to struggle to believe certain scriptures because what we've seen and what we've experienced has more impact than, than this knowledge that we have heard, okay? Um, so let, if we were to take an example, Okay, um, and they, this is here's an example. There's this person, and then they say that um, my spouse will never ever cheat on me. Okay, my spouse will never ever cheat on me. Okay, this is what they believe, this is where they are, right? Then something happens, 
this, you, come, you come home this one time and the spouse is with someone else, right? You find your husband or your wife with somebody else, maybe your best friend or whatever, and um, you find them with somebody else. What happens to that belief that oh, me, I know my spouse will never, ever, ever cheat on me? It goes away, right? It goes away and it's replaced with something else. So what are we picking up from here? Is that the beliefs we've had, it's possible for the beliefs that we have had to change or to even go away. Even though this is a terrible, it's a horrible example, right? But we, we were picking it up that it's possible for the beliefs, beliefs we've had to go away. Um, and, and now let's look at another one, okay? It's going to be an exercise so that I, I, you guys can talk to me as well, right? Um, so now imagine this, imagine this. Um, you are driving, okay? You're driving and, um, and there's traffic. You're on your way to work, there's traffic, but you've prepared for this traffic because there's traffic every day. So you left home very early, you knew you're going to be stuck on traffic and you still you know you're still going to make it on time at work so there's traffic and as you're driving you see in the mirror that oh there's a taxi um that is driving on the yellow side um up, over the yellow line right and they are speeding and and you can see they are trying you know to move as fast as possible so that they can cut you and come in front of you and continue and you've been seeing this guy doing this. It's a taxi driver, he's alone, there are no passengers, and he's, he's speeding, he's been doing this, you know? And um, so you tell me now, okay? Um, how do you feel about this? What, what comes up for you? Will you let him in? Will you let this guy in? Okay, you can just type your responses. I'll go to share. So now you're driving, right? You can see this guy is right here and he wants to cut you, right? And go in front of you so that he can, you know, be his own road. Are you going to open for him or are you going to block him? What would you do in this particular instance? You can just type your response. I'll block him, I'll block him, I'll let him in, um, I'll let him in, I'll block him. So there's different things. Um, responses that 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 we are we are getting here right okay so perfect then let's say you then let's go with the ones who said we block him okay you block him you continue right and as you're driving then you see him again because the road his side of the road the yellow side opens up and this guy goes there again and he drives up and he passes you right and what are the feelings that are sitting there for you okay for those who said i'll block him what are the feelings as you see this guy passing um, and he, he, you can't block him now anymore. He's moving, you know, he's, he's trying to pass everyone on the line. What are the feelings that are there for those who said I'll block him? I'll be feeling irritated, impatient, yeah, angry. Yeah, and, and, and that's how we are, right, on the road. Like, oh, taxi drivers again, they're doing it again, right? Um, so you'll be irritated as you drive, like, hmm, I wish I could have fucking game, right? But then, let's say then now, so this is how you feel, you're blocked, that taxi drivers are disrespectful, and you're so angry, why is it not considerate? We're all late, you know, that's what we say, right? We're all late, we're all driving here, and we all want to get to the other destination. You're annoyed, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is where you are, this is what you're thinking, and what you're feeling, and this is what you're believing, that this guy is just being, oh, you know, what they are. Now you drive and you get to work. And now you, you are a nurse, okay? So you're a nurse, so work for you is the hospital. And when you get to the hospital, you walk in, then you see this guy and he's crying and there's a lady. Um, he's standing next to this lady and the lady is bleeding and he's crying and the lady's bleeding. 
and you're like, hmm, okay, what's going on? And then you ask your colleague, what is happening there? And the colleague says, no, um, the wife was stirred. And so we call the husband to say, please come quickly, you know, um, your wife is not fine, she was scared. And um, so this is the husband, you know, and this husband then is the same guy you saw doing that on the road. Um, so how are you going to now feel this time around? How will you feel now that you know? Okay, particularly for those who said I'll block, I'll block him. How do you feel? And are you annoyed, you were angry, you felt like, oh, taxi drivers don't respect people, uh, taxi drivers don't consider. You feel, yeah, you feel awful. You feel, oh, you feel so bad. And 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 the belief that you're going to have now about that guy is like, oh, but he's not really in a, he's not annoying, <laughs> he's not being annoying. He's like, he was trying to go. He was trying to get to his wife as soon as he could possibly can. So the stuff that you felt, that's another thing. You said you felt, they go away in this moment. Um, and, and what you believed about um, the meaning you gave to the situation goes away. Because now when you look at it, you no longer say he's just being ir an irritant, right? But rather you're saying he was, trying to raise to get to his wife sooner. So you give the events, they're still the same, it's still the same event, but you've given the event a different meaning, okay? You've given the event a different meaning. And because of what? The experience that God is, because of this experience, new experience that you have had now, okay? Because, and, 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 and that experience, helps you to have a different belief and meaning to the event, all right? And, and, and okay. Okay, so what allows us therefore, right? <laughs> to go through other experiences in order to heal that experience, okay? All right, so, so then if we were to ask the question again, can we break free from this pattern? Can we break free from that pattern of being held captive, um, chained by um, what happened to us then? Um, the meaning we gave to that event, to the beliefs that we had, um, then, is it possible, is there even a possibility that one can break free from that belief that you held, it, the belief you've had? And the truth is yes. How? When we found that the experience um, has more impact than the intellectual knowledge that you have. Yeah, how? By, by having a different experience, which will give a different meaning, right, to the event. Okay. And that's why this verse is very dear to me. Okay. This verse is very, very dear to me. Those who know me, they know I over I abuse this verse, right? I totally abuse it because it's so dear to me. Because it helps us to, to understand this better. It's possible because God allows, you know, the it, it, verse, let's go through the verse. Same time. The verse is. This is now Paul, right? Um, in Ephesians, from verse 14, he tells us that he's praying, right? He's praying for, for, for the church in Ephesus. And, and his prayer, part of his prayer, then he says, he prays that um, they may know the love of Christ, which pass, passes knowledge, which goes over intellectual knowledge. He says, I, my prayer is that you may know. You know, the love of Christ. Now, that word know here is ginosko, right, in Hebrew. It's ginosko, and ginosko uh, means a in, in, in intimate, intimate knowledge, okay? Um, it means a experiential knowledge. Well, it means experiential knowledge. 
God is saying, my prayer is that you may have an experiential knowledge of the love of Christ, that you may experience the love of Christ, which is beyond knowledge. It's, it's beyond knowing that he loves you, but that you may experience it because the Lord knows the experience has more impact than knowledge. So, and that's why Paul says, once you have the experience, I know you won't struggle so much with understanding the fact that God loves you. The experience therefore is, is required so that then you may be open to the fullness of God because now we're limit, living in such limitations because of all these things that we're carrying, right? The layers. So for you to fully experience even the Lord, you need to have the experience. You need to experience the love of Christ. And the Paul that is saying this is, is, this, is the same guy that used to be Saul, <laughs> okay? Who believed, okay? Who believed that Christ, this Christ thing is fraud, you know? Um, Christ, is, he, he, Christ is not the son of God. And all these followers of, of Christ, they're deceiving people. So if ever I'm a, me as, as, as Paul, I'm a, I'm a good um, as a, a teacher of the, of the word, I need to make sure we destroy and kill these people. This is where he was. This is what he believed. Okay? Then he had an experience. He had a different experience in Damascus, which changed the way Paul continued with his life. All right, because at Damascus, that's where he, he met Christ. Then that experience caused him to believe that Christ is, even though he, he, before he didn't, he, he believed, he even calls, he says, Christ is Lord. This is what, this is what he calls him, Christ is Lord. And this is the same guy who used to think this is, this is God. You guys are just deceiving people. That experience changed his view and his way of looking at Christ. And then he, he started walking a different journey where he became the teacher, you know, the follower of Christ and bringing people to Christ to this God who is able to transform our beliefs and transform our view of life, transform the meaning we give to things, right? It's the same Paul. So when he's saying, in, in my prayer, therefore, is that you may experience the love, it makes sense, which goes beyond, it goes beyond knowledge. And that's what God, right, does with us. That's what God does with us. God allows us to, to go through certain life experiences. Okay? It's necessary, it's necessary. He allows us to go through certain life experiences so that he can give us a different experience, our own Damascus experience that will cause us to change the belief we've had, which is held holding us captive, right? Even now that we're dying after years of event. So what's holding us captive is not even the event itself, but rather the meaning and the belief that we are, we are carrying with us, which is informing how we respond to life, okay? The event was absolutely horrible, right? But, but, but what is causing us to suffer continuously is because of that meaning we gave it and the belief that we had around it, okay? So God has to bring in a different experience in order to free us from that belief which is limiting us and not allowing us to fully be there for, for the ones we love, fully be there for ourselves, fully be there for him. Like I said, I was even performing for God. <laughs> so I'm not, I, my, my, my relationship was performance-based on than, 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 you know, intimate. And I thank him for the healing because then, then, then I don't feel that burden I was hearing. I'm free, I love him. We have an intimate thing going on. And, and, and it feels so good. It feels so good. Why? Because of the different experience that God gives us on the journey. So these experiences that God allows us to go through, we're, we're almost close to the end. These experiences that God allows us to go through, right, in life now, now that we're adults as well, they trigger us, right? They trigger that thing that happened. Um, they trigger us. 
I think it, it was it was Linda that mentioned that, right? Um, that oh, it's triggering a whole lot of things I, I I don't want to face, right? They trigger us, okay? What is a trigger? <clears throat> a trigger is a traumatic reminder. Danger, 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 danger. It makes us feel like we are there, you know, and we can be triggered by smell. A smell can trigger us, a place can trigger us, a certain topic can trigger us, a certain song. I remember, you see, early after my sister passed away, and um, if, if her favorite song played, uh, I was just up weeping, you know, um, because it will trigger me, you know. Um, so, so it could be a song or anything, anything, right? It could be really thing that engages our nervous system, you know, and it causes us to feel those deep, painful emotions, right? It becomes a survival response. And now we want to respond to it. Um, we want to respond to those feelings by um, blocking, you know, avoiding, or, you know, whatever coping mechanism we put together because we're trying, we're trying not to, to, to feel these things, but these triggers, you know, so some experiences trigger these things and then we respond to them using our coping mechanisms, right? Because those triggers, they awaken buried feelings, buried memories. Like we said, the body never lies. It keeps the record. So that's why these, there are these triggers in our, in our bodies, okay? So if, if we will now understand, we'll just go through this, this example quickly, <clears throat> this thing. Let's, let's try and understand this. So the guy that lies, right, let's use him. So um, the friend calls and says, let's go out on Sunday, okay? Um, so he lies, you know, he doesn't want to go, he doesn't want to go out on Sunday, he doesn't want to. So then what he does is that he lies, he makes up a story as to why he cannot come because he can't get himself to what, to tell the truth and say, I, actually, I don't feel like it, I don't want to go. Um, so, because and, 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 and this, thinking about the fact that, you know what, maybe I must tell them that I don't want to go. It, it makes him feel things, he panics, he fears, oh, no, 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 I mustn't tell this friend the truth. And because if I do tell the truth, I might get into trouble, they might not want to be my friend anymore. Oh, this and this and this and that and that and that. And that. Because he's got that belief that says, no, truth is not safe, right? Truth is not safe. Um, I told the truth to my stepfather and he threw me into the world, okay? That's what I saw, that's what I experienced, okay? But here's the question that if we were to ask him, right, is, but yes, we understand, yes, true. You saw your dad, your stepfather throw you against the wall and, it, and then you felt like it's not safe for you to tell the truth. But did you see this, right? that if I tell the truth, I will be injured in the future. Okay, did you see that? Did you see that everyone that I tell the truth to will injure me, will hurt me, right? That you didn't see, that we didn't see, that is made up, right? You, you, you concluded based on that event and you applied it to everyone. You applied it to everyone. And it, but, but you did not see that. That's, that's made up, right? And it's because you gave meaning um, to that particular event. And then you, and then you get into the pattern of, of lying and lying. And you will continue with this pattern until we reach a point where um, we surrender, okay? Where we we surrender this particular area. We don't want to make sure I, I surrender all years. That's perfect. That's good. But experiences, right, give you an opportunity to see what what needs healing, okay? Because there is an opportunity. I'm inviting you to come with me um, for lunch. 
So, and you're saying, okay, man, let me just tell no, see, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like it, okay? But, and, but that makes you nervous. All these emotions, they come up and, and but they come up, I, you're scared, you feel like well, it's not safe. Maybe they will never be my friend again. That is an opportunity. Those triggers are necessary because what are they doing? They are revealing to you an area that needs healing, okay? They're revealing to you an area that needs to, an area that needs to be surrendered to God so that God can then take you through a healing process, okay? You can then go through a healing process. So this is what you, because, you know, um, holding on to something <laughs> does more damage as this person was trying to be taking, yeah than letting go. Letting go is not easy. That's why we surrender the situation. So, Lord, I need healing. I can see there's this area in my life that requires healing, okay? Um, I, I, I need a renewal. Uh, I need you to renew the meaning um, to this experience, you know? I, I need you to restore, to transform my belief. I, I need you to restore me because that's what God does. It's God who, who heals us. It is God who renews our mind, right? And it's him who can who transforms our belief, right? And it's him who can restore us. And I always say, God is in the business of restoring us, okay? God is in the business of restoring us. And we cannot reason our way out of these things. We need to go through the experience. Now, the, the way the experience can happen, <clears throat> this is the healing process I went through, right? Um, this is a healing process that um, others also have gone through. It, 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 I guess people have different ways, right? But this is one for me that has helped me with a lot of things. And let me tell you, I'm work in progress. There's so many layers that are here that need healing, okay? Um, and I get surprised all the time when I get triggered. And I, I said, Lord, but how many layers can you do I have? You know, that I, I'm, I, after all this work we have done, I still feel triggered by things. And it's true. There's just so many things, right? There's so many layers that we have formed here that God needs to peel off, that God needs to peel off. And as experience experiences trigger us, they reveal to us all these things that need healing. Okay, so one, um, you, you, you we can notice a behavior, right? A, a behavioral pattern, okay? Um, like, like the example we gave now, you only see a need to, to lie um, or you're not looking after yourself or this or this and that. Or sometimes um, you notice a trigger, okay? And it's important that we pay attention to that particular feeling in the body and how we are, right? It could be a strong emotion, you wake up sick, or you're forever sick, right? Or you start eating like crazy, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you, we need to pay attention more to us and, and, and without blocking ourselves, um, without running away from these things, okay? Um, and, and then you need to take it to the Lord, like we said. There's a surrender that needs to happen here. There's a surrender that needs to happen. So you, you'd find a comfortable place, that's what I do. I move into a comfortable place where I can't be distracted, where I can't be distracted because I, I'm I want to open myself to go through the process. And I pray that I'm not for God to be present, but that I may be present in his presence because I know he's there, he's always there, but it's me sometimes who doesn't want to see him, right? And pray for guidance to go through this process and, and then I go through the unpeeling process and, and you can, we can't really go into detail with this, right? Um, but I'm just giving you a high level as to what you want goes through, right? And um, where we go through the feelings that are there and find the thoughts that come up with it and get to the belief um, that is there and, and, and the source, right? And then there's a review um, and then you, we, we go to find the truth then about this whole thing, this truth. Now I'm here, what is the truth, okay? It becomes a process. And this process can also lead to getting to a point where you, you, you have to forgive men to, to, to break free. There are certain things you have to forgive, you, to forgive yourself, 
um, for, 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 for causing this thing to drag whatever. You have to forgive, you're forgiving the other person, you know, and um, forgiving whoever that is there, you know, to, to break yourself free from that. And, 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 and we, we don't always get this thing right. Sometimes you go through the process once and because that experience here in the truth, all of a sudden just go, you know, because when you, God, God sits with you and says, but what is the truth here? Come, let's look at the truth and not sleep. Okay, I hear you, but is it true that everyone that you're lying, going to lie to, like we said in the previous example, will hurt you? And when you face that, you're just like, yeah, but that, that, but that, that was not part of the story for real. And it liberates you, okay? Sometimes it's not a once-off thing, right? You have to, God has to take you through the process again and again and um, for you to break out there. And, and some of the stuff that some of us will struggle in the forgiveness process where um, you're trying to sit, you know, yourself and allow yourself to, to forgive the other. Um, what also, what helped me also to, um, with, my, with my dad's situation, right? Um, is, is, is that truth plus that forgiveness, okay? Um, that forgiveness day, because I struggled, you know, to forgive. Uh, like a good Christian, what I did was, oh, I forgive, you know, because I didn't want to look like, I didn't want to feel like I'm not a good Christian. Lord, I forgive, I forgive. And I even had a chat with my dad about it, you know, and I, and I said, you know, this is how I felt, daddy, da, 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 da. but I forgive you, right? Um, so we had our own chat around it because I, it was important to me, right, to, to have that conversation with him. But even after that conversation, when I would say, yeah, I forgive my dad, there'd be triggers, right, to say, ah, you, know, you know, you're trying to be a good Christian here, that things that are sitting here, um, and it looks like, you know, the forgiveness thing is not there. And, and God had to take me through a number of experiences. And one of them that really transformed me, that helped me out, <laughs> is when my when God gave me a different experience, the experience was, let me put it like that, the experience was um, a, a conversation I had with my, my aunt, who is my dead sister. And she was just sharing with me, you know, their story of how they grew up, because I just wanted to inquire. Tell me more about you guys. How did you grow up? How was my dad when he was young? Um, then she, she shared the story of how um, my, my, my dad's dad was also, my dad's dad was, well, back in the days, um, you know, my, my, when my grandfather, when I met my grandfather, I just would think, oh, my grandfather's a charmer, you know, and he was that guy who puts the pen, you know, here and walks around and he's, you know, smooth talk, you know, um, very smart as well. And then my, 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 so my mom, my aunt will then say that, um, no, you know, your, your, your grandfather was tough, was a tough man, you know, and, um, and, you know, he used to be so rough, uh, you know, with my, 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 my grandmother, you know, he was abusive physically and, um, and my grandfather also had other women. And so my grandmother left him and um, so they went to Cape Town and then they went to Queenstown and, um, you know, in trying to, to escape that kind of life. And, and so they were young then, they were very young when all of these things happened. And my dad was not happy about all of these things. He said, my dad used to be, you know, angry about what happened. It didn't sit well with him, I guess. And this made me realize something that, ah, oh, okay. My dad actually went through this, okay? And obviously, based on what was shared, he, he didn't really, he didn't want to be, um, turn out to be like the father. But, but, but because if we don't allow ourselves to heal, right? If we don't allow ourselves to heal that pain, then what we do, we continue to hurt. We give people that which we have in our cup, right? You cannot give people a, something that you don't have. So whatever that you have in your cup, that's what you give, right? And that's why if you are not, if you are not healed, then you are gonna give that. But when you heal, then you are able to give something more healthy. Um, and, and that's what happened to him is that 
this is this is where he is. This is why you know. This is why he he was like this. He maybe couldn't break free, and because and because really hurt people. If they don't break the chain, they will continue to hurt others, and that's where he was trapped. And that liberated me. It threw me because and it actually brought me to a point where I felt so much compassion for him. I felt so much compassion for him because. He, he gave what he had. He gave what he, even though it was so painful to us, it was painful to me, but that's what he had. And that's why we then need to heal for the sake of our children, okay? So that we don't continue this thing, that at least it must end somewhere. It must end somewhere, okay? And that's the problem really that we have in the world is that, hurt people people are hurt it's not unique to you it's not unique to me people are hurt people are hurt and up until we find healing up until we are brave enough to say lord here i am i've got these things that i need you to unroot to unearth so that i can be a healed person and continue with this love so that I, I don't go around hurting sometimes you hurt people without even knowing you're hurting them and that's the painful part about this thing um, so yeah, high level, this is the process. Um, and, and let me tell you, healing doesn't look cute. I love what this person has depicted, right? Um, is that we think healing is, is looks like that, but actually it looks like that. You don't like what God reveals to you. You don't like the things that God is going to say to you in that corner. It, it, you, you cry like a baby. You, you, sometimes I, when I'm crying, I look at myself in the mirror and I look absolutely horrible, you know, um, because you don't want to face those things, you know. Um, but, but, but God takes you out <laughs> because we, it's possible to replace beliefs. If we don't have to believe what we believed, God gives us experiences that help us to replace those beliefs with beliefs that help us to be free and continue with our lives without holding on to that. Right? Coming to me. Um, so like we said, then um, God is in the business of restoring uh, children of the Most High. He wants to restore us you know, into who we are, so that we can be able to live out the purpose. He's the one who created us, okay? So he's the one who knows who we are. So um, that's why we cannot cut him out of this. And so, and he wants to restore us, okay? So that we can become who and what he has purposed for us to be. But now because of these layers, makes it difficult for us to even understand why we're here, what was our purpose, how can we serve God, how can we serve people, how can we be happy, how can we um, live a joyful and fulfilling, meaningful life. We, we can't with these limits that are standing in the way. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 says, I, for I will restore health to you, not just physical health, emotional health too, spiritual health too, God can when we allow him to, okay? Um, and your wounds are we healed. It's a promise, okay? Declares the Lord. So it's important that we really um, allow ourselves to go through that so that God can peel off the layers, okay? Um, you see, we're closing. <laughs> the, the event did not kill you. I want you to think about that, okay? Let, let that sink. Something painful, okay? We're closing. Something painful happened to you. That's true. I, we, I, it's true, right? And, we, and, and I get it. Something painful happened. Something painful happened. And we, we will not even reduce it to, to anything less than painful. It is. And, and, the, and you know, it could have been deep pain. Absolutely, absolutely. But I want you to think now about this. That event, as painful as it did, as it was, it did not kill you. That's why you're here. It did not kill you. That's why you're here. So why would you then kill yourself for it? Because what we're doing when we are carrying these things and not allowing ourselves to go through a, a process of healing, we are not exactly what we're doing. With ourselves we're killing ourselves and 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 you know there's books written about how even uh, these emotions you know these emotions can cause sickness you know diseases in us right cancer 
um, high blood pressure, all these things that can cause um, heart problems and, and all of that, right? There was even a study that was done on how, um, you know, cancer, I wish I could pick out that other book that I bought, how, how, how certain emotions are associated, you know, with cancer, right? And certain emotions are associated with this disease and with that. And, 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 and it's because we're there, these things are toxic. <laughs> These emotions that we're holding in us, you know, that are that we're stored, we're bearing, we think are not there because we've blocked them, they're damaging us, you know, damaging our relationships with the people that who love us. And we think we, because we're trying to shield ourselves, we don't even allow ourselves to be loved. Okay, not to love, because we think if I love and this person is going to hurt me, um, why would you kill yourself for that? God wants to break that chain, okay? It is possible to break it. It's impossible for us to, to be freed from that so that we can understand. We will, when we allow God to take us through it, then we get this faith that all things indeed, they work together for good. Even that, God can use it for good, okay? Thank you so much. I took quite long, okay? I, I will give more time, really. I will definitely give you more time. I'll... I'll make a plan with the other because um, I wanted to cover this. You know, I took so long, we took so long with this, but we did, we did just a piece of the pie. Um, but yeah, there's, there's really more. And, and as I said, the best place is to have, you know, an intimate thing going where people um, can allow themselves to be open and, and we create that safe environment. Um, for us to go through this thing. But thank you so much uh, for allowing me this opportunity. Um, so now we will take questions. And if you want to share, please be open to do that. All right, all you right. Most. Thank you okay, so much. Mama, thank you so much. In, and also, thank you for taking your time while you're at it, not rushing the process. And Linda, I'm about to hand over to you actually, because a lot has been said on the chats right? A lot has been said on the chats, but I want to give each and every individual person a chance to voice out whatever's on their hearts right now, because going to the chats would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. So I'm going to allow for hands at this point, and thank you for making us mindful of where we've been and how deep it actually is. It's, it's not as surface as we thought as we thought it was. So I'm going to allow for a round of hands, questions, comments, and straight from your mouth to the speaker's ears. Linda, I've asked you to unmute you. Go ahead, ma'am. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Um, Mina, my question um, is, how is it that um, as, as a person that went through a particular kind of trauma, for instance, um, I went through literally the same thing that um, Mamaloi went through. And, mm -hmm. but on top of that, like my father was emotionally unavailable, you know, um, even before he left um, emotionally, he was always unavailable. And how is it that as you go through life, even before you can process things like as a teenager, you know, when you start being seen by boys and you start seeing cute boys, you always seem to attract or be attracted to the same people that carry the same things that cause your trauma, you know? You, you had an emotionally unavailable father. And so mm -hmm. you go through your dating life, dating guys that are emotionally unavailable. Like it's a paradox to me. Why does that happen? And um, is there a way to put a stop to it? You know, because um, it's, a, it's a struggle. I, 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 I see it with different levels of trauma. And I'm always asking like, Umuntu was out of wedlock by 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 their mother, 
iskate sining also goes through the same thing na ye abe nomtana out of wedlock you know and goes through particularly the same life that their mother went through you know it's like they are vicariously living through their own mother um thank you for that question linda um host do you want me to answer the questions as they come or let's get a feel of if there are any more questions on top of that but that's a pretty okay. interesting problem yeah can we have a, a round of hands saints if there's any question you would like to ask maybe let's dedicate the next 20 minutes 20 to 30 minutes to a conversation this is this is our chance uh can i have a round of hands i see fun hidden can i have the proper round of hands so that we can after the round of hands we hand over to mamnosi to take the questions. All right, so I'm going with Van Heden. So you will take Van Heden's comment or question. I'll take it now and then I'll hand over to you, Mama, just to raise some pointers right there. I've asked you to unmute you, Van Heden, go ahead. Um, I also have a question and it's a bit of an observation as well that emotions, when someone is emotional, they are seen as being weak. So, you know, we hear statements like, don't be emotional. Now you are being mm -hmm. emotional. What, what, is the, what is a healthy level of being emotional? A and at what level do we say now, now, this is not healthy anymore? And, and at what level is masking emotions healthy? And at what level is masking emotions unhealthy? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm asking this because emotions in general, um, I remember, I'll speak for myself. I remember when I was a child, my father hated seeing somebody crying. Absolutely hated it. If, if you are crying, you, and my father was around, you had to wipe your tears quickly because he doesn't want to see tears. So what is a healthy expression of emotions? Can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I'm done. I just wanted to, to, to say that. Okay. Yeah. How weak is weak? How weak is weak? All right, ma'am. If there's any other hand, okay. Can I have a round of hands, says? We have limited time. According to the brief that I got, we have limited time, no, ma'am. Okay. Mta, I've asked you to unmute you. Go ahead. Um, thank you so much, Leander, for that one. Um, Thank you to our speaker. Wonderful. Well, my word, wonderful. Thank you so much. We much appreciate. Um, the, the idea of, of going through a lot um, as a child and then it affects you in the um, adulthood life is, is a reality for many of us. And, and I want to speak from the male perspective because what you know it just said triggered me. <laughs> when you say a father hated tears in the world of boys boys don't cry boys don't feel pain apparently we're made of copper and steel and and, uh, and cement we, what we go through is kept to ourselves um so under the under the guise and, and facade of, of laughing and making jokes we're hiding a lot so maybe we don't want to encounter things and so we joke about things as guys, we joke about this and that. So you, you, you all these kind of things. So because we're trying to hide stuff in, in our heads. Um, so how then, much as females are also here on the platform and much appreciated, how then do we also help the male child who goes through it? I, I find I've got a lot of friends who are girls and they speak about their emotions and I find it so amazing that people can actually talk about what they're going through and with my friends, we don't. If one of us is going through a painful experience or has gone through one, it's it's absolutely no point. No, it's going to be okay, man. Come on, man. Let's just laugh it off. Let's just, you know, go play football. Let's forget about it. You know, one man or no, we don't cry. So how then, what, what is the role of, or how can we help the male child, whether as friends or as partners, or as um, family members or as a community as well in line with that. I think for pretty much for most women, it's easier to talk, easier to, 
let the, let others know what they're going through. What about the male child who always keeps things to himself? And does it does it also explain why we are so aggressive as men? Why we are so angry all the time? Um, why we are easily angered as well almost all the time? And so, how then do we help the male child? That probably is is my is my question. Thank you so much, Mkwan. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Ma. So I'm going to hand over to you to address those two or three questions that we've been through. And then lastly, after this, I would like to believe, I don't know if you still got some time on your hands, but lastly, we're going to take Ume Lucy no Ishmael after you address these past three questions. Thank you, Ma. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Budi. Um, okay, so let's start with, with Linda's question, right? Um, and Linda's saying, um, it seems like you know uh, you you keep attracting the people who are similar to the one who has caused you the pain, right? And it's, it looks like these people are actually the ones you keep attracting your dad. Like you may she made an example, a dad that's not emotionally available, okay? But then it looks like you keep attracting people who are also not emotionally available, and and um. And I know that there is quite a number of coaches who have also spoken around this particular issue. And the way I see it, right, because we'll all look at it differently, the way I see it, I see it as an opportunity, right? Um, that it's an experience for you to, to heal because those people trigger, they trigger you, right? These people you keep attracting, they trigger you, they trigger certain things about you that you experienced with your father. So, but what we do is you want to, because they trigger things you don't want to deal with. What you do, you quickly move without to the next relationship, without allowing yourself to heal. And, and, and remember, we're on a journey of healing. So if this doesn't work, then God is going to give you another experience, okay? Or you will choose for yourself another experience that will allow you to heal. And, 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 and that's why for as long as we have not healed that, then we will keep going through a journey that is trying to find us in order to, to, to heal that particular experience so that you can then be healthy and, and be able to in that particular area and move on. And, and, and maybe you will then start attracting, right? People who are emotionally available because uh, maybe you're also not emotionally available for yourself because that's what we also do. We treat ourselves the way um, the other people have treated us, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's how I see it. I see it as an opportunity, really, um, for, for us to heal that particular. Um, was talking about emotions, how emotions are, are deemed as weakness, you know, and they say, don't be emotional, you know? And, um, and what I've picked up, Nozi, also around this particular issue is that even, in, even as Christians, even in churches, we, we don't normalize emotions, um, you know? When you have a particular emotion, anger, whatever, then like, no, 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 no. It, it, it's always, and maybe we don't even do it intentionally. Uh, pushed away as if those emotions, it's wrong for you to feel that. But what we don't realize is that God made us emotional beings. So where do emotions come from then? They don't come from the devil, <laughs> okay? Emotions don't come from the devil. When God put us together, he put us together with emotions. He made us, he made us emotional beings to feel things. And it's important for us to feel because those feelings act like triggers, warning signs, or, you know, they help us to, to gauge where we are, you know? So the health, how healthy our health state, you know, of our being, you know, so they're necessary because if it was not for that emotion, you would not have known that you are struggling with a particular area. So emotions are very good. Emotions are healthy. Emotions, we, 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 don't, we can't even say we must, this is where we draw a line with emotions. Feel all emotions. You know, whatever emotions that come, we need to allow ourselves to feel it. Happiness, feel it. 
even aiming a feel it because then allow it to to come up don't block it because in that anger there's a message all right where you will say oh okay um why am i feeling angry instead of pushing it away because how can you free myself what is it that i need to, because that anger is telling you there's something that needs to be healed because we know that emotions that are toxic and anger is one of them right so you allow it to come up and say why am i feeling angry okay and then we need to sit with that emotion and understand where it comes from so we can surrender that area or that part of our lives so so that we can then move on with life healthy all emotions are important okay there's no emotions we can't even weigh it and say this is where you draw the line feel all emotions because all of them are necessary um in life and then um, um touch on a topic i think it's a topic that a lot of groups in South Africa are really trying to tackle it. Um, and, and it's not even a South African issue, right? It's, um, it's a world wealth issue where we're talking around men, boys struggling to express emotions. Boys do struggle to move because of how um, they've been programmed, even from a young age, that men do not cry, okay? It's even worse when you're African, right? Um, because African people want to uh, you, we want to train our child, boy children to be strong, we mustn't cry, we mustn't express emotion. It's a sign of weakness. If you cry, are you a girl? You know, they will even ask you, are you a girl? Why are you crying? So then you, you, you don't cry because you don't want them to think that you're a girl. But this is, emotions are not bad. Emotions are not bad. And, and it's going to be, it might take time for us um, as a world, as, as a country, even as a church, maybe, uh, as a community, to get to a point where we, we embrace, we, we, that we, 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 we train and program, reprogram or reteach um, and, and it, our boy kids that it's okay, you know, to express emotions, you are human, it's being human. Emotions have nothing to do with gender. It's not about being a girl or a boy. You, it's being human. And this is how God made us. God made us emotional beings. So we can't block certain areas as if God made a mistake when he created them. All this is what God gave us because all of this is important. My brain is important. My emotions are important. Everything in me is, is important. And, that's, and God was, he was intelligent in his intelligence. He put us together like this. And and getting maybe men to that state will require a lot of normalization, right? Where um, we need to be intentional about normalizing um, men being free to, 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 to express emotions. And you know how we have done it with um, Black people embracing being Black, you know, being African. Um, it started small. It was like a wave, you know. You would have picked up. It was a wave a little bit because there was a time where we thought, uh, having white hair looking white and all of was was critical but black people have it started small it started with an intention and it started to grow right we were starting to embrace who we are we're comfortable with our hair um we're comfortable with our languages and we're comfortable with our clothes we are starting to so so it it, it needs someone who's going to be intentional we need to be intentional and create those platforms and and we need to all support that movement we need to jump in it. Women, like you are saying, you know, even parents, friends, um, you know, even the people that you, your, 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 your wife, your, your girlfriend, whatever, even ladies, we need to embrace it because um, though I was listening to, was it one of them the other time where this guy says, because I'm scared too. He says, as men, we don't have a platform where we can be free to express our emotions. And you mentioned, you touched on it as well. Then we, I keep these emotions. I'm even scared, you know. Um, I'm even scared to tell my wife I'm scared, you know, because I don't want her to think she's got a weak um, husband. So, or so I keep these things to myself. I keep these things. And the more we bottle these toxic, uh, these toxic uh, emotions, right, and um, that put us up, they will they will come back to us. And, and unfortunately, they come back in a more toxic way, right, where you are now starting to hurt other people and say, 
I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I'm, 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 I'm this type of man who, get, who gets to a point where I get too angry, you know, and I can't handle my anger. And sometimes I beat my wife or, and I go out and I, and I feel so bad for a guilty and because now I'm taking out too much at, at once. Maybe this could also be a tool to help us to deal with this thing that we're struggling with as a country. It was struggling with daily with innovative violence. I'm not saying all of this thing, the reason for it is purely based on this. We don't know, right? We need to look deeply into that particular issue. But what I'm saying it could be an area that we need to support. It's not that way and be intentional about that kind of a movement um, to help our men to heal, to help our men to feel free. Like you're saying, women talk and then we get over and your friend will say, yes, to me, I'm one, blah, 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 and come with you. And after that, you feel okay, okay? Let's be okay too. We need to make an intention and with our children too, okay? Um, my son is, for me, I'm comfortable with my son expressing emotions, you know, and it's okay. We need to, we really need to play our role, even if it's in a small group or community, but let's try and be intentional around that. Um, so, yeah, so that's my take um, on the questions that have been asked. So um, we can, we can, we can take more hands, yeah. Okay, thank you so much for doing justice to those questions. So. Uh, the last round of hands, I would like to believe, if at all there's anything you'd like to say, this is your chance, raise your hand so you can voice out uh, your thoughts. Nzotata, well, I saw a comment on Facebook, but I'll just check on it now, which, as I allow Umelusi, no, no, Ishmael. You're the last round of hands, you're the last hands, guys. Melusi first and Ishmael in that order. Melusi, I've asked you on YouTube, good sir. Okay. Um... Hi guys. Um, I mean, I, I think I have to see. If, uh, can you hear me? I feel like I'm not. I'm not good enough. My network is not good enough. But uh, let me just try to to be short. Sure. But I I, I want to give it. Oh, okay, cool. All right, fantastic. Um, Mina, I was raised by a single mom. Uh, you know, like the nine to five job and Sunday to Sunday kind of thing. So when you grow up, the only thing that you want to be is like you know, it's your wife or it's your girlfriend and make sure that she doesn't go through the same things that you saw your mother going through. Uh, by doing so, I think most of the time what happens is like when you, you are having an argument with your other half, you usually concede to not arguing a lot because you don't want to be like that man that probably your father was that's the reason why your father left but I growing up I later discovered which I, I sometimes look at myself and think I'm emotionally imbalanced because of uh, the way I grew up and how I take things emotionally and I cry a lot and so for me I just want to know how do you balance that you know where you feel like sometimes I if there's a issue that is like this and I can actually feel like now I, I'm going to cry and I feel like sometimes it's I'm a bit unbalanced on that aspect because I can get angry and when I get angry instead of being physical the only thing that I can usually do is cry because I never wanted to I never wanted to see my mom going through the pain that she went through and it affected me in a way which when I was communicating with my my woman it actually go to a point where we have to make a decision together. If you over accuse, I'll end up like saying, okay, sharp, and it went on and on, it affected things. So I need to know how to balance that in terms of the emotions and being firm when you're saying something without being too emotional about it. You know, I think it, it does affect me a lot. And then I, I, one more thing that I've discovered again, being a cultural African man, there is, there is an issue that we are actually told to be strong as men and uh, you know, to show your, your, your strength as a man. In our culture, but again, it, it, it comes from how you were raised. How do you deal with your emotions? I mean, when I was growing up, I think I was like an A student and it got to a point where I... I, I gave up on being good at school because I felt like nobody really noticed me or 
because my mom would be at work. So no one would come to school, check my books, or no one would care about my results, unless if I failed. So when I passed, no one would say anything. But when I failed, I, I realized that everyone was on my case. So for me, it actually affected sometimes the confidence, the self-esteem I'm going forward. Probably that's why maybe I cry a lot or something like that. So I need to know how to balance those. Thank you. My leader, thank you so much for being vulnerable with us, eh? allowing us into that space. Mm -hmm. As such a huge community, you can imagine how many people are going to hear it. Ishmael and then Van Heden. I think, let me guess who knows, I'm guessing, I hope I'm right. Ishmael and then who knows. Ishmael, I'm gonna ask you to unmute you in a minute. Go ahead, sir. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for an, for an opportunity to speak. Um, but I appreciate, thank you, Ms. Baloi, for, for the presentation. Um, I've learned a number of things. <clears throat> so I have a question here. Um, so my question is, is there a chance to, to develop um, positive beliefs um, mm -hmm. during some of these traumatic events that um, maybe during the healing process, we do not necessarily need to change them. Uh, so what I noticed is probably in the examples that you gave us, we, we, we kind of had some negative beliefs that um, came up or it's, it's obvious that when someone is hurt, it's going to develop negative beliefs. So, so my question is, is, is there such a chance that you can develop um, positive beliefs that will actually help you in, in a later life, like when you're an adult or so? Yeah, thank you. Clear, clear, clear. Thank you so much. How to redirect, how to do things differently and learn and do otherwise. Last hand for now. I've asked to unmute you, Nozi. I hope I'm right. This is Brother Nozi. <laughs> and uh, uh, this week, on my on my way from Swaziland, I switched okay. to some radio station. And this lady had an experience that's similar to the one that I saw uh, uh, on the comments, some uh, someone posted on the comment. I think it was Inga. A uh, uh, lady uh, wrote in or sent through a message to the radio station. Getting feedback. Can I continue? Yes, we can hear you. All right. All right. So this this lady says that uh, she, she, growing up, she had no connection whatsoever with her mother. And uh, now she's, uh, she's an adult and a mother recently lost her job. Is it her duty to take care of her mother? Now the presenter uh, on that particular radio station that I don't remember anymore because you know on the way you lose a, a reception so many times so you switch between stations. Now the presenter said that it is not her duty the mother was never there for her, so it is not a duty to take, take care of her mother. The mother should fend for herself. Now, I know the default answer in this platform is different from what that presenter said. But I would like to know, I'm not sure if uh, our, our presenter is... Uh, Pro, usually you introduce the uh, presenters and give us uh, their background before we come on for this platform because we're in a church setting. And there's another answer that you'd give in your workplace. I'm assuming that this is your, this is your uh, job. This is what you do for a living. Thank you. I was told to end by saying thank you. Okay, my king. Thank you so much for that. I hope you got that number. It's, you're up now. Yeah. Is, is there another uh, hand or should we ask? Yeah, there, there's one more. I don't know if Ishmael is coming again for the second time, but there's another question by Unokanyo. Would you like to just iron out the question? Yeah, let's take Nokanyo as well. Okay, cool. Ishmael, please confirm if it was your hand was raised from the first time or you want to say something again. Okay, never mind. Nokanyo, I've asked to unmute you. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the conversation. It is a, a, a quite a deep one. And thank you, uh, Mrs. Baloy, for how you have uh, handled it, uh, particularly the, the questions. And I can see indeed that it has triggered a lot of emotions and uh, unprocessed uh, experiences uh, in many people. And uh, that is a, a good thing because un unless we can confront uh, such, uh, we will go on bleeding onto other people. It's a, a touchy subject, uh, childhood wounds. It's quite uh, touchy. And what I wanted to say is some of the comments I've seen here, particularly around experiences that people have had and them trying to make meaning in this platform, I do not believe that a lot of justice can be done in that. So what I would, I would mm -hmm. actually say, I would applaud uh, the people for, for, for sharing, for being vulnerable, and for also speaking about things that are personal. And I would also, however, recommend that you, now that you are aware that this, these are some of the issues and these are some of the things that you need to make sense of in your life, it truly would be very, very beneficial for you to go for therapy, go and mm -hmm. handle and, and work through these issues because people are like onions. We've just peeled off just one layer and there are so many other layers. We are layered and Unfortunately, our wounds play out in intimate relationships, which is why it becomes a vicious cycle. We get wounded by people who are wounded, and because we don't deal with our scars, then we wound other people. But thank you, thank you. This has been a very uh, beautiful uh, presentation, Mrs. Baloy. There's just one thing that I wanted to add on to, uh, if you don't mind. Someone asked something around why we usually speak uh, people, I mean, who, who have got the, the qualities of our primary caregivers, and you handled that so well. And uh, I wanted just to add one thing that we, we truly want to correct that, but we need to remember that we don't consciously gravitate towards those people. We subconsciously do that. In us, we carry a template, this wound of how we're let down. So we look for yeah. a corrective experience. It's almost like when I go into that relationship, is going to correct and undo all of what was done to me when I was young. So I was let down this way. So hopefully this is going to be fixed this time. So we, we literally go into yeah. a relationship. We, like we've got so, so many wounds, please heal me. Please, we're always looking for healing, but you have rightly said, ma'am, that the Damascus experience is that relationship. We get wounded in relationships, but we get healed primarily in a relationship with Christ, which is exactly what he did to the woman at the well. When she met that guy Jesus, and had that relationship, he just fixed it all once and for all, which is why she goes out now and have other relationships that are going to be more mean, meaningful. But thank you very much. I truly was, was blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Um, Leander has fallen off. Um, and thank okay. you. Can... Yeah, so you can please attend to the questions. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you so so much. Shinta. All right, um, thank you all for 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 sharing. Um, I know it's not easy to share your story, right? Um, it's truly not, and I can see that even the questions are quite personal. And um, as our mom fundisi and psychologist said, you know, as we said from the beginning, the platform is really. Um, it says what? Oh, okay, sorry, I thought my video was on. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, um, host, for that. Um, it's it, this kind of platform is really it's not it's really not a an ideal one for us to have this because of the sensitivity around the topic, but because we don't talk about it as much in churches, right? So we wanted to peel off at least one layer to encourage us to start um, walking and, and dealing with the issues that are coming up for us. All right, okay, let's start with Melusi then, and then we'll just go through um, in that order the questions that have been raised. And Melusi, thank you for being vulnerable with us where you shared how, you know, you were raised by a single mom and, and because of what has happened, right, with you and your dad, dad leaving, then you wanted to not to be like your father. And now I want you to pick up something that so the belief you hold, you held was then that, you know, if I'm not going to be like my father, I need to adopt a certain kind of behavior, right? Um, with my wife, 
and um, and that for you was I must just not get into conflict. You know, I must avoid conflict because I'm I'm not trying. I don't want to be like my dad. Okay, um, and and and. And now the certain questions I just really want you to ask yourself is one, does avoiding this situation make you not to be like your father? Is it true that when you avoid this situation, then you're not being like your father, okay? Um, is avoidance the, 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 the key that makes one not to be like um, the person you're trying not to be, okay? just leave it hanging and then another one is um by avoiding how then um um how is the person that you're you're trying to avoid the conflict with like you would say your your wife you'll say okay just do whatever um that you think is best so you're actually not allowing yourself to come fully into this conversation you you're blocking how does that make the other person feel okay how does that make the other person feel when you're not engaging them on certain issues, right? Um, because your, your, your aim is not to hurt them, your aim is not to be horrible, but is, 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 does avoiding prevent them from really hurting, okay? And it's really something that you will need, you know, a, a very intimate and go through this process to understand because what is sitting here is something that needs to, to heal because you are, you are walking around with this, I'm not trying to be my dad, I'm not trying to be my dad. So, and, and this is, is causing you not to be fully available to yourself, to your family, because you're trying to walk around like I'm not trying to be my dad. And, and, and it's something that needs to be healed, right? In your experience where you, you, you can break free and be free to talk, to express yourself, to be available, with, without that thing that says, if I'm doing it, then I'm being like my dad. You are not your dad, okay? And it's a difficult one to, to understand when we're talking about it like this, right? And that's why um, I liked the comment made by Unokanyo, where she was saying that these things need, you know, um, an intimate conversation with a therapist, with a coach, where you can engage in a deeper into it. Okay, it's an area that needs that needs to be healing, um, to be healed, right? Um, because that's what you you're working with. It it appears it became your coping mechanism to say, I just need to avoid things that are gonna get me into you know war with my wife. I, I don't want to be like the other person. So that's that's what I would say. That's just my take on that. Okay. And then Ishmael. Um, says, um, okay, positive beliefs during, okay. Can one develop some positive beliefs? Can, can these events that we've gone through, that was a question, have any positivity to them, right? Can they just develop any positive um, uh, beliefs? Because the ones we've covered are the, are the negative ones, right? Okay, here, here, here is my take. If you can, can anything positive come out really from it? right, is my understanding of your question. And the truth is, yeah, they, there's a lot that has come up. You know, if I were to take from my personal experience, I, I see how even the coping mechanism I used has benefited me, okay? I see how it has helped me through life, right? Um, it, it's not bad to, to, to strive to do well. Right? What makes it bad is the intention behind it. If I am doing it so that you can see me, I'm working so hard so you can approve me, I'm working so hard so you can accept me. And that's the toxicity that's sitting there, right? But if I'm working hard because you know what, I just love, it, it, it comes natural to me, I enjoy this thing. And, um, and, and, and there's nothing that I'm carrying, you know, around it then it's a good thing. And, and really, they have saved us both positive and negative, these things. And we're here right? because of them, right? Um, because we've used them. So they, they have had some positivity in them, but unfortunately it came with a lot of um, negative in it. So there is some positive, because then you, also there are lessons that come from it, right? Where you learn, oh, okay. It's just that at, at the young stage, you can't process them. Um, you can't process them because also some of them, they push us to want to come out of the situation. I'm going to work hard 
so I can get a good job or is that a great company so that I can be this so that I can be that. Um, and then, so there's positive things that come out. They shape the people that we become. And also you're not faced by, when you face troubles, right? When you go through epic things in life now that you're all, you're like, this is, is nothing. It's nothing compared to what I've been through, right? Um, there was a person who was making a joke and they say, yo, 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 yo. Um, the kids who are growing up now, they struggle to cope with things and, because they think everything comes in a platter of which really not necessarily all right, but that's what, and I guess that's why it was a joke, but those things have, have helped us to be able to go through tough experiences in our lives. So whether it's at work and you, you're not faced because you've, you've, you've been through worse. And so certain things to you are just like, you are really nothing. And you are able to, to navigate through a lot of things um, because of that, right? So there's quite a number of positive things that really come also from those experiences. Um, yeah, so I think that's what you wanted to drive that in. Maybe they're not really all negative and, and I hear where you're coming from. And then, um, so should I say Mr. Van Yerden? Because, okay, when I see that, I just think it's nosy. You know? um, um, so I guess the hubby was one that was, that was talking. Um, this, this, and sharing, you know, the, what happened at the registration where the lady was sharing how she never had any connection or relationship with the mother um, for certain reasons. And, um, and now the mom has lost a job and she wanted to find out if she should go and, um, and help the mother out, right? And, you know, I, I'm not one to say, this is what you should and shouldn't do. I, I, I don't believe in that, right? And I'm not like that. But what 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 she but it's something though that she needs to to sit with, right? And and understand what was what would cause me not to help my mother. Okay, my mom is in need, and currently she doesn't have a job and she's in need. And I, I'm at a point where I can help my mother. Then what is it that will prevent me from helping her? Okay, because in there, there could be something that she needs to heal, okay, um, that has caused her to say, I want to have nothing to do with this lady and has made it so personal that um, she's willing to help any other poor person, but not the mom, you know, so, and, 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 and unfortunately, um, good people, we are living in a world where human beings are, are hurting people, right? And, 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 and we hurt each other, you know, we hurt each other, we continue to hurt each other, but should we continue the chain of hurting each other? You hurt me, so let me hurt you, um, you know, but, but it's something that he needs to sit with, right, and, and look at um, as to what is sitting here, and therefore, after the process, what, which, which part should I take? But we don't have to um, and yeah, but who must you must just be aware of the chain that this thing is creating that okay, yeah, that now you want to hurt her because she hurt you. Um, yeah, what's there? What's there? What's causing you not to be able to to to, to heal? Um, not to help the mom when she's in need. Okay, something for one to review. Um, our mom food is. <laughs> Nokanyo. Nokanyo is also a, 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 a psychologist, right? Um, so she can help a lot of people here as well, all right, um, who are going through. And I appreciate the comments, my friends, that you shared here in this platform. Very, very helpful. And the point that you also raised that, you know, um, around the fact that the question, I think it was asked by Linda, uh, that this thing of attracting the people that are doing the same thing. And I love how when you say it's because sometimes we walk around with this script, <laughs> corrective script that says, oh, please heal me, please heal me. So you find these people who are similar to your father in, with the hope that they're going to heal you, right? And they don't have, heal you and then you move to the next one and then you move because you're, you're, you're hearing this. And, and you know, even at times, sometimes you become the father and you, 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 you are the one who actually becomes emotionally unavailable to the other, 
you know, um, becoming the, the one you're trying to run away from. Um, you know, sometimes that's also a risk that we see. To so it's, it's, it's this thing is deep. <laughs> it's really deep and it's difficult to, to deal with it here, right? Because we've got a limited time. Even the platform doesn't allow us to really be intimate and, and, and really see to, and, and give each other the attention, the time, the support, the love, the care that we require as we go through this. Um, because as you said, it, it, it takes out a lot, you know, it triggers so many things. And, um, and you would really want to be in an environment where we are, we feel safe to share, to talk, and, and that's why Nokan I said, maybe after this, um, some in this very same group, because as Christians, we always think that, you know, we don't need this thing sometimes, right? Um, but maybe, maybe we must consult with um, a therapist, you know, um, a coach um, to help us through this because we want to heal, you know, and go through the healing process. It's a process, right? It's not an event, but it's a process. So thank you so much um, for, for your time. I see this one last hand. Maybe we'll take that one last hand. Um, yeah. All right, thank you so much. Um, it's just you, Figile. Thank you for the answers that you brought through. Figile, I'm going to unmute you now. So you go ahead and um, thank you for the patience of the saints. We are rounding off anyway. I think Figile will be the last one. Then if there's any deliverables, we will do that. But otherwise, We've come to probably the end of a very, um, you know, heavily emotional lesson. Figure it quiet. Good evening, guys. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Loud and clear. Yes, we can. Okay. So, um, actually, I did raise a hand earlier. And then I was like, no, let me lower it because I wasn't really comfortable. Um, but now I just felt to I need to open up and actually ask this very question that... Um, it's actually the conversation that took place today is something that I am actually in. Like I am that I'm, I am in that position where at least I need to find like a suitable answer so at least I can be at ease. So uh, before I can ask, I'd like to uh, say thank you to my friend who's part of the church to invite me to be part of the conversation. Um, so now what happens is I grew up in a uh, in a family where it's polygamous, but now my dad is married and has this wife who he stays with. And when we were growing up, we grew up staying with my mom, my aunt, my grandmother, and my cousins in one house. So he'd come and visit seldomly. But now, you know, when you are growing up, you only used to seeing this one person. And then eventually my mom bought a house when I was in trick in 2013 and now firstly I didn't have that relationship with her and when I finally thought it's oh now we've moved into our own space we'll start having that relationship he comes into the picture and that whole thing just goes away even before I could share it with so now right now I'm finding myself I have a son who's almost three and now I'm finding myself in a situation where I have love hate relationship with the father of my son because I don't really trust if fair that he does really love me because what I've been um, observing with my dad he'd he'd come and then he'd leave for a long time and he'd come back and my mom would take him back and he would leave and then you and it's time and as I grew older and I told her about it to her it doesn't even face her like she doesn't care how I felt and to some point, I ended up getting blamed for him leaving. To me, it didn't even make sense. What do I have to do with this whole situation? So now, I'd, I'd, I'd like to find out exactly how does one deal with such, because at this point, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive, I'm gonna forgive her, but I'm not gonna be in her space. Like, I'm just gonna have to, detach myself from her so that I don't have to witness all of that going on because my son is growing and he's not growing any younger and if he's getting used to seeing this thing and I know him and his dad are not yet married but now 
it's also like a pattern in our side because it's like I'm pushing him away from wanting to come closer. And at the same time, on his side, it's like he's pushing me away from wanting to come close because of whatever he's dealing with. So now, how does one deal with, like, peer from such? Like, am I wrong for detaching for the sake of my son? Because I don't really, I don't feel guilty about it. I am at ease at it, but conversating with it to my friends, they somehow make it look as if I've done something wrong. And I'm just thinking, but my conscience doesn't really something heavy about the about the matter so yeah thank you thank you so much Pigil. i just want to check a few things if i i understood the story so you're saying um you you keep pushing the father of your of of of, of your son yes right um and you feel like he's also okay with you um, pushing him away that's what you yeah saying. and and on his side, he's, he's just telling me, stay, look, this is where we stand and this is what I intend us to be. But I don't really trust it because that's what I grew up seeing. Okay. So he wants something. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Thank you so much for that clarity. Um, and again, Figle, thank you so much for sharing, right? Um, thank you so much for being vulnerable with us and sharing your story. Um, we appreciate it. We truly do. Um, and 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 as as you said, you know, your it's 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 so true that you know what happened to us, our childhood, it follows us everywhere. And what you are saying here is that he is struggling to trust the father of your child because of what you experienced with your dad. Your dad came. Um, he was here now, and then he's gone for a long time, right? And then he will come back again, and he'll be gone for a long time. And so to you, it appears that men can't be trusted. They, they, they are here just for a short period, and then they disappear. And, um, and I can't allow myself to go through that as well. I don't want to be like my mother and go through that and expose my child to this. But and, and it's definitely an area to, to heal because what you have done as well, because that's your coping mechanism, you're trying to protect yourself from men, right? To say, I, I don't want to experience what my mother experienced. So the best way for me to do that is, let me just push this guy away. He wants to commit, no, I don't trust you. And I don't want to create anything solid with you because once I say, yes, you're going to do what my dad did. But think about this. He's, what, well, what you saw is that, right? What you saw was what happened to you, what your dad doing that. But does it mean truly, right? You sit with that, the question that says, does it truly, does that mean that every guy is like your father? You saw that, but you saw it with your father. Remember we said the experiences are more impact years than the knowledge. That's what you saw, your father, but you didn't see every man doing that. And the other question, are the men that actually do stay with women, right? And, and create healthy relationships with them? And the answer is yes, okay? So if, if when we're looking at throughout the world, we can say, okay, it's not all men that always leave. It's not true that all men, um, do that, they leave, they can't be trusted, they can't be committed, and uh, men cannot, that, it's not true that it applies to all. And it's also, and, and we've seen that there are some who do stay, there are some who do commit, there are some who don't do that, right? That's the truth, but we are here. And as we say, that's just knowledge for now. That's just knowledge for now. And, 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 the, and the experiences, but I've experienced the men that doesn't, but not all are there, and that's the truth, right? So it means there's a gap then here between that which is true and where, uh, where, where your, your mind and your, your, your mind is at, right? Um, because it has ruled all men and put them in the same bucket, even though they were actually not all there. Right, so so that's when that's why we we always need healing, and and I can I can 
I understand because I know what you're going through. Not my experience in yours might not be the same, but I it, it makes sense. But it shows us, right? That there's a gap, there's something here that needs to be healed, where you are able not to punish all men because of this event. Okay, because you're not just what you what, what that is doing is not just to shove people who could potentially be loving you because you are worthy of love. There could be a man, really, maybe I don't know the father of your of your child. Maybe he really loves you and he wants to build a great relationship with you, right? And 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 loves his son and and he wants to do that, but he blocked it, right? So what you're doing, you know, it's not just to him, but to you. You're blocking love from coming to you. And you're also, what you're doing also, which you didn't mention, you could be doing, you're also blocking yourself from loving because you think I can't give my love to those beings because what they will hurt me. I love them and now I'll be more hurt because I have actually allowed them inside my heart. So you're actually blocking all these things, right? So you, you're blocking these blockages that are not allowing you to experience, you know, allowing you to 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 be to, to come out and, and be free without you know holding on you and, and because you think you can protect yourself from pain and we truly cannot right and there are other things that are still going to hurt us in life and that are hurting us but we can break free from them because you are worthy of, of receiving love you can have a healthy relationship okay you, you are not you, you, the experience of your mother and your dad does not have to be yours. That was their experience. That's their, That's what they went through. And you happened to also be in it where he's absent to you, but you can feel that. And you don't have to be trapped in there. Right? Like, but this requires obviously, right? We, Cause now we're just talking it through. It requires time to, to be in it. You know, and, and look at it and go through the, the healing process, like we said, because children of the most high, eh, we, 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 we are, and, and I want to say that, you know, that's the problem of the world is that we are, we are hurting childhood wounds. Um, the pain that we're carrying is, is what's hurting us the most, right? And, and we are, as Christians, we're also so quick to judge each other and say, yo, that one is a liar. But you don't even know where the lie comes from. We don't even know where that lie comes from. You don't know what got me there, but you're so quick to judge me. But there's something here that's lying here that needs, that needs help. Oh, that one is so promiscuous, but you don't know what got me there, okay? Um, and, and, and so, we, because we are very performance-based kind of people, and, 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 and may God heal us, you know. I really pray that the good Lord he heals us um, so that we can now start living. <laughs> he, 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 he truly, God has, he created us with a purpose, okay? He's determined us to be certain beings. He wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to be, he wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to, to, to experience love. He wants us to experience love. He wants us to have joy. The Bible says, um, joy, it says, it, 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 it says joy, what, it, it, but unlimited joy, right? I can't even remember the verse now. And, but it's unlimited joy. Even love is unconditional love. God wants big things for us to experience so that we can live meaningful lives, right? So that we can live meaningful lives and, and be present to be vessels. Because with all these blood blockages, how can we ever be vessels of love? Because we were struggling, right? To, to be vessels, to be vessels. And um, yeah, so I really pray that the good Lord, that may this be something that um, has started a journey for us, right? It's just the start of the journey. And make the good Lord really um, bless us all. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for being vulnerable. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much. And may the good Lord be with you. Please, yeah, don't block. Allow yourself to go through. Surrender. Surrender these things to the one who knows how to heal us. Mm. Mm. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Thank you so much, um, uh, Mrs. Baloy. We really appreciate. And thank you frequently for being vulnerable and to the family as well that is gathered here. We have come to the end of our program. Um, one thing probably one person said to us was, after this, where can we get help? Right? I think it's very essential that we, once we've exposed to the problem um, and maybe part of the solution, if somebody wants to probably talk to Mrs. Baloyi or Mam Nokanya because they've been on this platform and they are into this industry as well. Um, maybe you can be able to talk to them. Um, I don't know if the ladies are comfortable with us sharing their digits. Uh, Mrs. Baloyi, are you okay with that? I uh, may be putting her in a spotlight. Um, but <laughs> who comes to yes. us? So, so maybe what I could do is this. Um, and, and also there's Henrietta. Henrietta is the chief social worker at uh, Lifeline. South Africa. So let me just put my number here and also put my number also on Facebook as well. You want contact with any of the ladies here so that, um, you know, we, we only deal with people that really want to contact them. So please, that's my number right there. Please do contact me. We'll be able to get you in touch with whoever you want to get in touch with. So there's Umam no Kanyo, there is oh, Mrs. Baloy, there's Henry, and many others that probably are in the field that we don't know about. And you think that you could offer your services and help someone out there. Could be a male, could be a female, whichever the case could be. What we do want to see now is to be able to get people to get as much help as possible. In the book of Matthew chapter 11, and we're ending this, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. And I'll ask if Mam Nokanyo is here. She can pray for us uh, as well. Um, do I see her? I uh, don't think I see her. Mrs. Baloy, maybe because she'll pray. I want to read this verse, then you pray, right? Um, 11 of Matthew 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's the promise that God has given us, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light, and therefore we should come unto him. So whatever channels we may be going through, and we're grateful to everyone who attended today's session uh, for the vulnerabilities that were exposed on this particular session, everything that uh, was said. You need healing. I need healing. We all need healing. Our childhood wounds are a mess. May God help us. May God strengthen us. And let's be able to talk. Women have a lot of things that they talk about within themselves. Gent, school men, buffet. Ne? Let's talk, okay? They, let's talk. Let's, let's get it out there. Let's, 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 let's build up trust with one another. Let's look for help when we need to. If there's any anger issue, if there's any pain, resentment, let's just go out there and look for as much help as is possible. God bless us all. Ms. Um, Pisvaloi, please do pray for us. And then after she prays, um, I will probably give off one announcement. Maybe let me say it before she prays. Next week, uh, you'll see that we didn't put a poster for next week. Yes, we are having 2.30 conversations. We're still in contact with our speaker but we're gravitating towards the topic of the experience of childlessness. So we're speaking to a couple that has gone through the most in terms of trying to have a child and God has closed the womb or closed the men's uh, um, loins, if I may put it uh, that way. So we're gonna talk about that and how these people have gone through it, what are the pains that they've gone through and how we can help someone who may be going through all of this and that, how it can help me, who might not be going through all of this, to be sensitive to someone going through that. The pain of not being able to have a child of your own. So once we are done with the speaker um, and we confirm everything, please do check our Facebook page, um, 230 Conversations, that's on Facebook. Then on YouTube, in this particular presentation today, will be uploaded on YouTube probably today, um, by around 8, 9 in the evening. If not, tomorrow morning, definitely, it will be uploaded. So if, if, if you need to, you can check out the other uh, conversations that we've had. We've been doing this for over a year, just in case someone is coming here for the first time, doing this for over a year, a uh, year and a half now. So there are so many presentations. On YouTube, is 230 Conversations SDA. That's the name of the channel, 230 Conversations SDA. Mrs. Baloy. I'm going to uh, find you and probably unmute you. Okay. 
Thank you, Siamo. Let us pray. Dear kind and loving Lord, we thank you so much, Father, that you are a God that is always present. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you don't give up on us. We thank you that you keep on chasing us because you're a God who's concerned about being healed. Because Father God, you want to restore us. You, you want us to experience your joy. You want us to experience your love. You want us to experience your peace. And because we mean so much to you, uh, uh, David, out of words, says, what's man that you're so mindful for him? Because we keep seeing you chasing after us, dear Father God. You even give us experiences that will help us, Father God, to heal mm. and restore. And it's all because the love you have for us is so deep, it can't be measured. Mm. And that's why even Paul says, my prayer is that we may experience it. Because explaining you is impossible because you're God. Explaining your love is totally impossible because it's something we are not used to. We're such conditional people. So when you talk about a God who gives unconditional love, we, we struggle. We struggle with this uh, divine language, Holy One of Heaven. And that's why we need you to give us an experience with you. We need you to help us. Your children are wounded, Father God. Children are wounded, we are, we, we, we are wounded, we are sick, and we need healing from you. And, and, and sometimes, because the things that caused us to be here, Father, are so painful to look at, the, we try to avoid them. We try to bury them. We try to hide them because we think, for as long as I don't see them, I'm okay. But, but you're challenging us at this point in time to unearth, to look at them, to face them. The Bible says, go back to where you have fallen. And we always want to attribute this to just seeing. And it's not just that. Go back to where you got trapped into this. And we can't go back there without you. It is for this reason Moses says, if you know your presence is not going to go with us, we will not go. But you always respond the same and say, I will go with you. David talking about it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And he says, the reason why I'm not going to fear this process of walking through, and you are calling us to go through the healing process, which is not easy, which is not true to God. We don't want to face the demons. We don't want to face these things that are keeping us and trapping us and keeping us stuck. But he says, the reason why I'm going to go through it you are with me. And I ask God that we may see you. Help us to see you in our situations and trust that if you are here with me, then I will be able to come out from this. If God is the one that is walking with me, if God is the one that is leading me, then I will definitely come out. Help us to trust even you. Because sometimes, Father, we have treated you like the people who have hurt us. Heal us holy. Because we want to be in great health, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually. So that we may be able to experience the fullness of who you are. There are certain things you would love for us to know about us and about you, but we can't because, Father God, we're blocked. There are so many layers that are causing us not to see you or experience you or even experience life the way you want us to. And it is for this reason that we're surrendering ourselves this, more, this time, Holy One of Heaven, and we're saying we come to you just as we are. We don't want to act it out. We don't want to try to be anything, but for coming as we are for a transformation. Because your word says the Holy Spirit transforms. It's able to transform us into your image. Because your original plan, Holy One of Heaven, was that we may reflect your perfect character. And we can't, because there are too many layers. 
So we come to you, you who is our maker, who is our creator. You who is the only one who can anyway restore us. We come to you and we're saying, Father, here we are wounded, messed up, you know, uh, broken as we are. And we're saying, we know you can put this together. We know that you can heal us. So as we start this journey, Father, with you, hold our hands because they are shaking. Hold our hands because we're scared, we're scared. And that's how we feel. We are scared. You created these emotions, Father, to help us to gauge where we are. So we want to say to you, all that those toxic emotions and that may be sitting in us, we ask you to heal. Heal us, oh Lord. Kill us because when we break this chain of hurt, then we can be able to be instruments, fully instruments of light, of peace, of joy, and give love to one another. In your capable hands, all one of heaven, we, we leave ourselves and we ask you all of this be with your children is who's going to start a new week tomorrow with us and let us start a journey with you and this is our humble prayer this is our humble plea in that beautiful in that wonderful in that amazing name of our lord jesus christ who is the way who is the life who is the truth in his name father god we pray amen Thank you so much. Um, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless us all. May God save us. May God strengthen us. Thank you, Mrs. Baloy. Please also do pass our great, uh, gratitude to, to your husband, Uba Baloy. Um, very grateful also for him in your life. And to everyone on the platform, thank you for coming once again. Um, the Facebook family, um, I'm quickly sharing my number. I think I'd forgotten that in case you may need help or anything, please do update us. Please note that today we used a different link from the one that we usually use. We are doing some bit of some administrative issues. Hopefully by the end of the week or by, during the week, we would have sorted out the original link. So please do check with us almost all the time. I noticed that some people will use the old link and say the host has not at the meeting and all those kind of things do check with us. Um, Ashley, I think, is one of the most popular people that we have as part of our team. So please do contact Ashley almost all the time or check your statuses. We put all this or check our Facebook page um, and so that you know what's new, if there's anything along those lines. Just keep sharing. Somebody invited to feel in Amklanje. We are grateful for that. Um, thank you so much for Figilis friend. We invited her to come through. There are many people that have been invited that maybe were not noticed. We also thank you for coming through today. Um, may God bless you. May God keep you strong. And let's have a wonderful week. The prayer has been offered. We are healed. At this present moment, I'm going to stop the live stream on Facebook, right? And then what we can do quickly is we can um, have maybe uh, five, ten minutes or maybe five minutes of just saying hi to each other. And by now, everyone is free to leave. I think I'll speak to free to leave. Um, all and everybody else is free to leave uh, but you want to stay behind and say hi to others bye and all that we call this the after scenes or after tears and literally today is after tears right where we talk to each other more and more and try to relax and get to each other just give five minutes six minutes and we'll take it up God bless you all i'm stopping the live on facebook facebook family if you want to come through on zoom i'm also going to send the zoom link now so that at least you're not left out as well link i'm sending it there's space now for you to come through